Hey! <laughs> Very good. I like the background as well. Very swish. Oh, I'll have to get rid of that. I can't hear you. <laughs> How you doing, man? I, I just, I'm good. I wasn't sure of the, the dress code, so... Um, That's fine. I thought I would uh, go with x light and yeah, well, uh, Vision Track. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, we're not posh here, man. Don't you worry about that. You don't need to be turning up in a shirt and tie. Um, are you all right if we just crack straight on, or do you want to have a wee bit of a chit-chat, or... Oh, absolutely, one? yeah, no, fine, just crack on, batter on. Right. Let's how'd crack like, on with it then. How, how'd you like your fish? Bat, <laughs> batter on. Batter on, no, very good, very good. <laughs> Folks, welcome to this week's episode, and we've got Martin uh, from the Helmet Inspection Company. How you doing, Martin, for like? I'm all good, no bad, no bad, no Boosie, bad. Sit, like, sit like yourself. <laughs> now, anyone that's not from where we're from, uh, uh, Martin's from sort of my neck of the woods up in the northeast of Scotland. So uh, fit like you might have heard me saying it in some of the vids. It's just yeah. uh, local dialect, basically. It's just a way of saying hello. So what about where are you at just now? Then you're not up northeast now, are you? Yeah, I am. I'm in Aberdeen. You're yeah. Aberdeen just now. All oh, right, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, just in the outskirts of Aberdeen. Um, good. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's looking lovely behind you. It looks looking really good there. It's good. Yeah, weather's picked up dramatically <laughs> just in the last 20 minutes, Bruce. Yeah. Um, is, it, is it really snow and, and like ice and everything up there just now? Uh, it's, yeah, it's shit, Bruce, I have to say. It's been, <laughs> so maybe about two weekends ago, I was sat out in the back garden in the, uh, in the deck chair, Aye. getting my, my pale white face all... all burnt and uh the following week we've got a couple of inches of snow it's crazy and, isn't it yeah but it just it can change just like that though you know it, well as you probably know oh my my video is going all a bit weird I, on, I might i might i might change my video up from the gopro to the the facetime one stand by two seconds let yeah, me just no change worries. this i thought i was watching max headroom <laughs> it looks a bit like that doesn't it it's all going weird it, yeah. Yeah, well, the younger yeah. generation won't know what we're talking about. I know, yeah, everyone else will just be going, what? Right, there we go. How's that? Perfect, yeah. All right, beautiful. I'll tell you what it might be is um, I'm currently trying to render some 360 files, and I have been since, what day is it now? This is Thursday, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, Monday, Monday morning, I started rendering the files, and we're now Thursday and it's, oh, it's, yeah, my computer just seems to be grinding to a halt. I mean, it is, it is heavy going, these 360, and I've set it on the absolute highest mm -hmm. bit rate possible to try and get the best, best quality sort of yeah. render eye. But God, yeah. it's just, and on top of that, I've been trying to edit the video for tomorrow as well. And it's <laughs> the computer's just gone, nah, I've had enough. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I had the same, I had the same issues. Um, I was using a, I, you know, my my uh, Scottish um, traditions were that uh, every penny was a, p a prisoner, you know, <laughs> every, penny, every pound was a prisoner. Aye. And um, so I was running an old um, Mac, uh, Mac, uh, Mac desktop, and I was yeah. using that for doing all my video editing and re rendering and all of that stuff. And, you know, it was taken, I mean, I, I don't do videos anywhere near the length of, of duration that you do. Aye. And it was taking forever, you know, and I was thinking, oh, you know what, life's too short. You know, Aye. I can't get on with, with a job whilst I'm rendering stuff. So, and and typically if you went away at your bed and left it in the morning, you came down, it would be goosed. Mm -hmm. So I've had that. I, I, so I upgraded my, my computer and I bought a Mac mini. Oh, I... uh, just the wee box, right? Yeah. But I got one with the new, what's called the M1 silicon yeah. chip. Yeah. Boom. It, it just it eats up render jobs for, oh. for breakfast, honestly. Well, and they're so much cheaper than the big desktop machines as well. So, do you know what? I've, I've, I've been eyeing up that new Mac Studios come out, hasn't it? And I was yes. eyeing that up. Yeah. And then obviously you, you play the game, don't you, where you max everything out on the computer and just, yeah. right, I'll, I'll have the biggest memory, the fastest processor, everything. It was coming to like six and a bit grand just, just for the oh. computer. You still had to buy a mouse, a keyboard and a screen. So it ended up being eight and a half grand. And I was just like, 
That's insane. Uh, I can't. I can't justify that. It's ridiculous. Well, I haven't got it, but I can't justify that, it. That's a second bike, isn't it? You know. Well, it, it pretty much is. Yeah. So now what I'm thinking is, I I have. I've got an, a 2015. This is absolutely bugger all to do with why you're here, folks. But, but we will get to that. Don't worry. I've got a MacBook Pro 2015 um, yeah. MacBook Pro, and the pro, but the problem with that is it's now so old I can't run the latest edition of Final Cut on it. So yeah. I normally like I use where is it? I use. I use these little external hot SSD drives yeah. so I can, you know, I can edit away on it at yeah. home and then take the SSD drive with me and if I go away on a trip, I can save files on there and do some editing if I need to. Yeah. But now because because the uh, the MacBook's so old, I can't it won't let me edit like on the from the newer final cut yeah. that I have on the big desktop yeah. onto the laptop. So I'm well, thinking I'm probably just gonna I'll sell both of them, like the Mac, the desktop Mac and the MacBook Pro, and then just buy the sort of all singing, all dancing MacBook Pro. Well, just just make sure you get the one with the M1 chip. With the in M1. It. Yeah. Or yeah. or there might even be an M2 now, I don't know. But um right. uh, I mean <clears throat> the rendering went from like uh four hours to 30 minutes. Gee, why is really? Oh no, it's just amazing. Absolutely. I was speaking to Chopsy about this the other day as well. <laughs> And uh, God, I hate it. Listen to me just name checking you guys. Hey. <laughs> what a vlog right. of friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, one of the main reasons <clears throat> for me is because, like, this podcast, you know, they, they're like two to three hours in length. And yeah. to render that yeah. takes, well, it can take all day. And I've had some that go like all day and all night, literally like a 15 hour render. No, normally I can get it out in five or six hour render, but. That's an insane length of time, especially when you've got other stuff to be doing. So in my head, it justifies <laughs> justifies yeah. getting a wee load. And, and, I, bet you're, yeah. uh, I bet your brew time followers are really, really loving this one so far. I know, right? I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tuned in for the helmet inspection and we were chatting about Max. Uh, anyway, right, so shall we get back on course then, Martin? So let's let's do that. Martin, what is the helmet inspection company? What's it all about? Oh, in fact, I tell you what. Sorry, sorry. Yes, do you have yeah. a do you have a do you have a drink of choice? Because what, we'll get... what have you got there, uh, Bruce? Oh, good man. Is that Hazy Jane? Yes. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. Not sponsored, by the way. Not sponsored. No, uh, not sponsored either. No. <laughs> if only. Yeah. Right. Che- cheers. Slange. Just to your hell. Oh, beautiful. It just wets the whistle, and you know, keeps love, the throat lubricated. That. I love that hazy Jane. Those um, hazy IPAs. Yeah, but they're nice. They're pretty strong, though. Are they? Oh, uh-huh. I five percent. Oh no, it's. I thought it was more than that. Well, uh, I wonder five well, percent will do me. Problems. I thought it was more than that. <laughs> did anyway. you have you seen the podcast I did a couple of weeks ago with the husband and wife couple, um, Sean and Faye, Tins on tour. Yeah, I start, well, See, I started to watch it. I, I didn't finish it. I'm just, I just feel less of a man now. Like the amount he was putting back, I think even really? Faye was drinking me under the table. But the amount Sean drinks is phenomenal. Well, look at, um, I was watching something with you, uh, you, uh, like TMF, right TMF, TMF right. and uh, uh, Chopsy and Richie Vida, uh-huh. and you were all, you were all. I think uh, Chopsy was on the cider. And Richie Vida was on the Glen Mirage. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Is that the one when he was steaming? He got COVID. He got COVID it, literally uh, a few hours before we did the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> and he just yeah. got drunk to try and make himself feel better. By the end of it, he can't remember the end of the podcast. <laughs> well, I was going to say, I mean, he was cracking through them pretty quickly. It was. You know? Yeah, it it's was. Like a, it's, like a, it's like a nerves thing. I'm the same. So, you know, I used to be like that when I was a kid. No. Oh. And uh, chatting up girls, you know, and I used to get really nervous about it when we were out in clubs. So what I'd do is I'd just go away and get tanked up before I went out. Yeah. And I'd just make a complete tent of myself. <laughs> My mates used to wet themselves at, at uni because um, like I, I would just be the, the one stood in the corner, you know, not moving to any of the music. I'd just be stood in the corner, knocking yeah. beers back. And right. then literally you just hit that point, don't you, when... All right, start getting into this. And right. then that was it. Once I was on the dance floor, that was me for the yeah. rest of the night. Done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, bravado. 
Aye, that's it. That's yeah, thinking I had the best timing in the world. No. no. <laughs> anyway, right, Martin, Helmet yeah. Inspection Company. Yeah. Over to you. Yeah. So what do we do? Well, um, obviously we test motorcycle helmets. Um, uh, you know, why Why do we do that? Um, well, I I mean, just take, taking a, a step back, um, but I, I'm a biker and uh, I know how much, uh, how much a decent helmet costs. And um, I'd bought uh, a couple of years ago, I'd bought a, a new Shoei NXR. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was out, uh, out Braemar actually. And uh, I don't know if you remember, there's the Hungry Highlander there, where in the summertime, in right. Braemar, summertime, you've got all of the bikers coming in over Glen Shee, mm-hmm. and then the other ones coming out from Aberdeen. So it just seems to be a, a, a point where all the bikers congregate. So I stopped there, I thought, yeah, I'll, I'll get a crack here, a couple of lads, you know, and um, car, the wee car park there was so busy, I didn't, I didn't really have much space to uh, park the bike, so I squeezed in, took my lid off, and I thought, well, all right, well, just for this once, I'll put it on the indicator stock, you know? Yeah, and see where just, this is going. Just straight away, I was just re- repaid back with that level of stupidity, you know? But we all do it, you know. Um, mm-hmm. And I took the I took the helmet into the bike shop, local bike shop. They had a showy tech. I said, "Could you? I've, I've dropped it just from maybe waist height. Can you just check it for me, please?" Mm-hmm. They had a look at it, took skull skull liner out and all of that, and uh, had a look at it to the inside. Had a look at it on the outside. Yeah, it should be fine. So it was just the should be, but yeah. it wasn't really hitting it for me. I spent a long time after that just trying to research what exactly is. If I send this lid off to Shoei, what are they actually going to do? Mm-hmm. And I just couldn't find anything to, to substantiate what, what the test program existed of. So <clears throat> anyway, a year later, I think it was, uh, so it must have been about three years ago, actually, because a year later we had our, uh, COVID came along and we went into our first lockdown mm-hmm. and uh, my day job uh, I was I was self-employed and all my all my clients just you know the work just fell off a cliff edge what was so it you did I was um so I did uh, sales consultancy so okay. it was uh, just for oil and gas and um, mm-hmm. service companies and I was also doing a bit of recruitment, sales recruitment as well. And yeah, all of that just fell off a cliff edge Yeah. Um, overnight. I had customers who had, I'd been working with for some time. I was working on projects for them. And they, they just stopped paying me. So, um, and, you know, it was a shit storm, really. It was a horrible time for a lot, a lot of really un, yeah. uh, uncertain time, you know. So, so um, I had a couple of paths that I was... Uh, chasing and the helmet inspection company was one of them and so I I was just trying to validate the the uh, the idea and the technology and uh, through as, well, as you know I've, I've, I'm on LinkedIn quite a bit mm-hmm. and uh, one of my connections on LinkedIn when I was speaking with him I was explaining to him what I was thinking about doing he said oh Go and speak to this guy at Loughborough University, um, Professor John Tyrer. He's 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 a world renowned expert on composite test uh, material testing. They do it on uh, uh, lifeboats, submarines, mm-hmm. spacecraft, human bones, eyeballs, all of that sort of thing. Uh, so so I approached. I got an introduction to to John. And uh, I, you know, started chatting away to him about my idea, and uh, he said, oh, "Yeah, we well, we've been doing that for years." So okay, so why 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 can't I find anything online about it? Uh, we we just we just deal with the, the big industrial stuff, so uh, you know, ships and things like ship hulls and yeah. things like that. You know, so I said, "If I could, if I could put together a business model that made sense." Would you be willing to come in on board with this company? 
And he said, yeah, well, he's, he's a biker as well, of course. He's, um, he's got two triumphs. All right. And uh, so what we've done is we've, we've uh, partnered, if you like, with uh, his business, which he's got was, was a spin out from the university. Um, and he actually, the technology that we use, he actually co-invented it 35 years ago. So, yeah. So in terms of finding the right guy for the job, He's your man. He's, he's definitely our guy, you know. So he's our technical director. Um, I then uh, attracted a couple of local investors who are um, my advisors as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if you hear some slurping and licking and stuff like that going on in the background, Bruce, that's my, my dog uh, drinking out of our, our bowl. That's nothing else, okay? <laughs> no worries. Just just as you said, dog, mine started barking <laughs> downstairs. So if you hear right. a dog barking, it's probably uh, we'll, mine. <laughs> uh, we'll, well, uh, yeah, we'll get all sorts of interruptions, so we'll, <laughs> yeah. but we'll we'll work through it. So yeah, that was that was. Uh, I went and got uh, put together a business plan. I researched the market size for motorcyclists mm -hmm. uh, initially because, uh, you know, that's that's the thing that I'm most passionate about, really. Um, and uh, I got the investment and um, spent some time developing a, a website so that the, there's back office functionality so that we could, they get the engineers can then scan in helmets as they arrive and we can update the customers by email and text and produce invoices and all of that stuff, you know. Gotcha. So, so then uh, we, 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 were, we seem to be spending a lot of time um, playing with our toy, if you like, and uh, not getting on and actually launching the business. Yeah. So uh, one of the our finance directors said, right, it's the 1st of July. Okay, guys. <laughs> what, we're going to launch on the 1st of July? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is only a matter of weeks away, you know? Yeah, yeah. <sighs> okay, 1st of July it is then. So <laughs> so that's what we did. And uh, it's, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a real roller coaster. I know that's a I know that's a real cliche, but um yeah. it's been a heck of a time to start a new business, to tell you that as well. You know, over the over the last few years. Wow. Well, it's funny, it's funny you should say that, Bruce, because um one of the other things that uh, has happened to us recently is that we got shortlisted for a business startup award, national wow. national business startup award. Um and we're we've been shortlisted in the innovation category. And I was reading all of the information behind the awards, and there's like something like two hundred thousand startups in the UK since COVID came along. Wow, seriously? Yeah, yeah, it's wow. mad. It's mad. And I think yeah. I think a lot of people have been, you know, oil and gas industry is quite bad for it. You know, when the price of oil goes up, uh, it's all hands to the deck, and mm -hmm. you know, silly wages, silly daft daft day rates start getting coming into play. But as soon as the as soon as the price of oil goes down for any length of time, it, you just get dumped out onto the market. Yeah, yeah. My, my dad was oil and gas, so yeah, we've got, we've got a lot of experience of of that feast and famine, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the same thing basically happened to the entire country, yeah, <laughs> the yeah, entire yeah. world. It the is. entire world. So, sorry, mate. Can I, I just need to go and give my dog a boot in the arse. Is that all right? I'll be two seconds. Sorry, mate. We'll edit no, this bit out. Don't worry. No worries, I. <clears throat> so, um, essentially, then, like from a, a customer's point of view, what 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 service does the helmet inspection company provide to? Like, say say me, if I if I drop my lid, what yeah. do I do? Yeah. So, um, if you've dropped your lid, and if you're uh, you know, if you're interested to find out how what the structural integrity is, and if you, you know, if you want to find out if that helmet is still safe to continue to use, yeah. or whether it's time to go shopping for a new one, mm. uh, book an inspection on our website. It's, it's a fairly straightforward process. Um, and then once the helmet arrives with us, it'll be uh, booked in. And you'll get email, an email to say uh, we've got it. <clears throat> And then the inspection, is it the inspection itself that you're interested in? Yeah, just like what, what service what service does the company provide to, to Joe Blog yeah, Public? So what, yeah, so what it is, is we're, we're, we're doing a structural test on the shell, the outer shell mm -hmm. of the helmet, right? Yeah. 
and that that is uh, that's usually about five to seven different points on the helmet that we'll do the inspection on, so we get full coverage. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, the way that we the, the way that we do this is that we use a, a, a process called shearography. Yeah, I did, I'd never heard of it before either until I started to to validate it as a as a suitable technology. Right. Um, but basically, what we're doing is we create a three D hologram in real time using a laser, and it's called a um, interferometer. Sorry, yes, I'm not. You can guess I'm not the technical guy, right? So, um, so we use a, an interferometer. Easy for you to say. And uh, I'm glad we're doing this bit right at the beginning know, before yeah, yeah. we've had some beers. <laughs> Three beers down, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Magic. I, I found the shiny thing. Magic happens. That's, that's it. <laughs> uh, and there's a big, massive light show. No, there's not. Um, so, uh, and then what we're doing is at each point, we apply a small amount of heat to the shell of the helmet. So then you've got uh, the coefficient of thermal expansion kicks in, right? I'm sure you were paying attention in, in your physics class. I was, I was, yeah. I, we were we were smoking up at the back of our <laughs> physics class. So it shows you how much how much like, attention I paid. Um, so we yeah we apply heat, and what happens is as that heat starts to leave the helmet, mm. if there's any any uh, any matrix splits anywhere in that shell at all. Um, if there's uh, cracks on the helmet, um, they just show up on our TV screen, very similar to looking at a broken bone on an X-ray. Right. That's just, I, I think it's probably the simplest way okay. that I can explain it. Um, and that technology is used uh, in industrial applications, as I mentioned previously. So the, the other part of John's business, they look after... I think it's 350 lifeboats from for the RNLI. Wow. So um, what they do is when they're when they're coming in to dry dock, uh, the, the lads will go down do the do a, a tech. We're not applying heat to the to the lifeboat. Mm. We use uh, they use a vacuum. It's just it's just a load, but it's going in the in the opposite direction basically. So um, and then what they do is they'll tell that so they'll identify defects or damage in the hull. Because I, I didn't know that a lot of the hulls are now carbon fiber. Right. Expensive boats. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So what they do is they'll identify the area of damage and they'll also identify the actual extent of the damage as well. Mm. And, and you need to start to understand a little bit about how composite materials uh, fail to understand that actually... So, so if you're looking at a, dam a damage, potential damage um, with your, with the eye, with the naked eye, um, there's it, a high chance that actually the damage has been has has moved out. It's moved. It's what it's done is the helmet's done its job and dissipated the, the force. It's dissipated the force, yeah. and that and and it has to break. So that's why that material's brittle, mm -hmm. so that it it will break, and in breaking and failing. Uh, it dissipates the force. Yeah, so, yeah. Because that's the that's the popular understanding, isn't it? That with with a helmet, with a motorcycle helmet, it's it's one dunt and done, effectively one collision and done, isn't it? That's what you're told. Is that whether you yeah. drop it off of your bike, whether you yeah. tap it against the wall, whether you come off at eighty mile an hour into a tree, it's one hit, and that's what the, the helmet's designed for. But obviously, that's right. You, you, your your technology, your company can can save somebody from forking out another three hundred quid, eight hundred quid, twelve hundred quid, whatever it is they, they, you know they're they're spending on their lids. So, Correct. Fantastic. Awesome. And it's yep. it's not a gamble yep. anymore, is it? It's not a case of you know as you said, I've done it. We you you put the your helmet on the 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 wing mirror or on your handlebars and. It gets a dunt yeah. and it falls, and you're like, ah, it'll be okay. It'll be okay. Well, yeah, now you can find out for sure. Well, that well, that's it as well. I mean, I I, I when I was when I dropped my NXR, <clears throat> there was just a tiny chip in the gel coat Aye. just at the back of the helmet. And uh we were sat down with my mates and we were all looking at it going, and my mates are going, 
oh, that's going to be fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Sure, that's going to be fine, you know? Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, now, knowing what I know now, uh, you've got absolutely no way of telling yeah. if it's going to be fine. It might be. It might be. And it might save yourself from splashing out another 450 quid. Mm-hmm. But it might not be. I mean, you, uh, I don't know if you watched uh, Chopsy's video do you, about... Uh, do you know, I haven't watched I was just a way to say Lamb Chops has, has done a vid with you guys, hasn't he? Yeah, so he thought he was taking his, you know, his uh, carbon carbon fiber um, AGB, AGB one, yeah. One. Uh-huh. All right, so he was about to retire that one because he'd bought a, an expert. And he said, right, so what I'll do is I'll come along. He hasn't, he hasn't bought an ex. He was giving it. He doesn't buy anything. Oh, was he? He's the blagging ah, right, okay. king, Lamb Chops. <laughs> well, he kept it for long enough for a freebie. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's tight. He's incredibly tight. He's not actually. He's he's not tight at all. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Go on. Uh, <clears throat> um, so he took his he took his AGV along the one that was given to him, <laughs> and uh, he thought he was just going to drop it. You know, we we do the do the test, show that there was nothing wrong with the helmet. Go outside, drop it, take it back in, and show where the damage was. Yeah. Well. We didn't really need to go through the drop test because there was some some pretty serious damage to the back of the helmet. Really? That he had no idea about. Wow. No idea. Blimey. And he was he was sitting there thinking, I've never dropped this helmet. Mm. I know I've never dropped this helmet. And then he started to think about the times that he's taken that helmet uh, uh, overseas yeah. to, for bike launches. Yeah. And, you know, it's been out of his sight yeah. at certain times as it's going through baggage or whatever. And uh, it's, you know, it's probably just taken some impacts there. So, you know, the the, the point there is that you, you could be, lo- composite materials are really good at holding on to their secrets, right? So there could, there could be a lot of serious damage underneath that helmet and you just can't see it. There's, there's no way you could see it. Blimey. And then there's the opposite side of the coin as well, of course, where we've had people who have, clearly been trying to use their heads to stop a low side you know and, and there's it's just like a big flat side on the helmet yeah, you know yeah and they're sending us pictures saying do you think you could test this <laughs> i don't know save, save your 40 quid mate yeah 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 exactly oh just a way to ask how, how much is it is it is that what the service costs the initial inspection 40 mm-hmm. quid yeah wow yeah, yeah. it's not a bad deal at yeah. all is it mm-hmm. yeah i mean i don't i'm not i'm not so sure that we could that we'll be able to maintain that price mm. because seven seven quid of that goes straight to parcel force. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, and then uh, the rest, you know, and then we've then we've got to give HMRC their cut for the VAT. And, yep. You know, so we're, we're <laughs> you don't you don't get left with much at all, do you? When you're running a business, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I hear the violins playing people can you <laughs> yeah but it's true especially these days it's, there's yeah. not much of a margin um right yeah. how about we crack on with some questions then uh martin because um i'm sure let's, that will take do us that, down yeah. it'll tell us a bit more about the business but also i'm sure it'll open up various different other avenues of conversation so as always <laughs> we'll go to the clan first so it's patreon.com forward slash teapot one first one justin geek and cycle he says greetings bruce and martin hope you're both well all good thank you justin what one misconception regarding helmets and ha- head safety do you wish you could correct globally oh Ooh. Well, that's a good one too isn't it <clears throat> um yeah so was that to both of us? Yeah, yeah it, it is, yeah. Okay. You go first. Shall I go first? Can I go first? <laughs> I'm like, oh. Uh. Yeah, so misconceptions, global misconceptions about helmet safety. Is that the question? Is, yeah, yeah. What, what, what could we change? Um, yeah, so I think that we've just, we've really just been talking a bit about that, actually. And it's the, it's the, bit, it's the, it's the, the aspect of, well, it looks fine. Mm. You know, um, uh, I think that's the biggest single issue with motorcycle helmets or any type of helmet, any type of protective helmet. Mm. If it looks fine <clears throat> and if it's not visibly cracked or damaged, 
then it, you know, a lot of people just think that that's, That'll that's be okay. It's good to go. Yeah. It's good to go. It's going to do its job. Um, so yeah, for, for me, I've just seen Justin's got a second question, but that kind of is along the lines of what I would have said. His he says, as a second, what differs in helmet inspection between the UK and Europe, or even the USA? Now, I was going to say the thing that gets me is that there seems to be. Oh, Dogs chasing the cat, sorry. Um, th- th- there seems to be a variety of different sort of helmet safety standards. I know I know that's that's not what your company does. The helmet inspection company, you don't rate helmets or anything like that. No, but I'm, I'm no. assuming you have some knowledge with regards to uh, like the gold standard in the UK. There's a European one. There's an American one. There's all different standards. Uh, surely, in, in my mind, surely they should all just come under one umbrella. So if they qualify for one, they qualify for them all. But it doesn't seem to be that way. It doesn't. And even in the States, you look at Snell and, and DOT, mm. um, you know, their standards are, well, they, the, the, the testing is, is, is quite different, actually. Um, and, and it's different to ECE 2206 or 2205 or 2206, which is the latest one. Mm. Um, and then you also mentioned... Uh, the gold standard, which is uh, presumably that you mean the the gold ACU, badge, yeah, the ACU the gold ACU, badge, the ACU sticker. So you're not required to have that by law in the UK, but you are required to have it if you want to take your bike on a track. On a track, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, like, so do you know what the differences are then in all those different standards? Uh, in short, no, no. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I mean, I could. I could become an expert in every different standard, I guess, mm. but it's not, it's not really, that doesn't really fall into our remit yeah, yeah. because we're not doing, we're, we're doing non-destructive testing. Mm-hmm. So that's a big difference here. Those standards are involved with destructive testing. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the helmet manufacturers, they have to adhere to whichever one of those safety standards they're, they're going for. And then you, yeah, you are ensuring that the helmet that they've made, they've manufactured, you're ensuring that that still has the structural integrity that it had when it came out the factory, essentially. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 That's it. Gotcha. Gotcha. <clears throat> and and the, the, the difference, the other difference, I guess, in what we do, apart from the fact that we're not destructively testing, but we're testing helmets that are that have been in use, they've been in service. Yeah. Okay, so we're not, this is not just batch testing a few helmets that have come off the end of a production line. This is testing helmets that have been in use uh, under a thousand and one different types of circumstances, environments, mm-hmm. conditions, and every single one is different. Yeah. But we got, yeah. What's the oldest lid someone's presented to you so far? <laughs> Um, 16 years old 16? Yeah. And they were still wearing it? No, they weren't wearing it actually It was a It was a TT An Isle of Man TT replica helmet Wow I can't remember what type it was <clears throat> um, And they'd never worn it And they just said Well, can I wear it? You know, I said, is, it, is it okay to wear? Uh-huh. So yeah, I mean From a structural t- integrity point of view It was fine Wow well, yeah, because you get told I mean, you, you get told every five years, don't you? That's what they say. Like no more than five years, change your lid. Yeah, um, it actually ranges between. I think if you buy an RI helmet, I think they they what they provide a warranty for seven years. Did they? Oh, I didn't know that. I believe so. I believe so. Oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, it's quite, the most common warranty period is between three and five years. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, that's yeah. what I've always been told by. I mean, the shops are going to tell you that, aren't they? Because they want your business every three to five years. But um, that's what I was always told. Yeah, yeah but it's a consumable item, mm. and and this is a this is another good point as well, Bruce. Because um, I think that message, when it comes from the helmet manufacturers, the helmet producers. It just seems a little bit sort of self-serving, doesn't it? Mm. But you know, if you get an independent body that says no, replace it three to five years, then I think that'd be more uh, 
more believable, yeah. if you like, yeah, yeah, or, yeah, or less less self-serving. Aye, absolutely. But but there is, I mean, we can come on to that later as well, Bruce, but there are really good reasons why that's actually a valid message. Oh, okay, right. Um, I think I think I've seen in I think one of the Instagram questions, somebody asked something about that. So we'll we'll leave it till then. If not, remind me at the end and we'll we'll cover it. No chance. <laughs> Next one, Raven's Head Radar. Hi guys, hope you're all keeping well. Yeah, fine, thanks, Dave. Cheers. What's the best hundred pound you've ever spent and what did you buy? Oh. Best hundred quid I ever spent. Hundred quid, yeah. Well, I can't mention that one. <laughs> Great minds think alike. Um, yeah. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit! Um, uh, Prague. Can you ask me one on sport. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! I'm trying to think of anything. Anything now? Anything? Uh, yeah. Hundred quid. Hundred quid. Hundred quid. Hundred quid. Sheesh! I can't stop thinking about someone else now. <laughs> Don't- that's where my head is as well. Uh, Dave, we'll come back to that one, mate. Well, it's a good question. We'll come back to it. Um, Hopefully not not after too many of these as well. <laughs> I know, otherwise the real story might come out. Next one, Lu- Louise Warsfold. Good evening to you both. What's been the biggest rip-off product, service or merchandise you've ever bought and why? Oh, right. Biggest rip-off. For me, it wasn't something I bought, but I was sent them to review eight years ago, about 2016, one of the first things I ever got sent. And there were these these vents, these plastic vent things that you slid inside your jacket sleeve. And it was to yeah. it was to you know keep your jacket nice and cool. And it's an Australian okay. company. And I was just like, have you been to the UK? You know, it's like I, I don't I don't need to be kept cool. <laughs> you need heated kit yeah. here. But um yeah. it was just it was just pointless because <clears throat> like I was riding a jixer at the time wearing leathers and my gloves went over my sleeve anyway. So there was just it was just pointless. There was just no point. And even and even these days, I think I, I just I just don't I just don't think it's a very viable product in the slightest. I don't even know if they exist anymore. But yeah, it's just a little plastic a plastic insert that you'd put up inside your jacket, which were a massive pain in the bum to to do, especially with gloves on. Just pointless. Yeah, yeah. And then presumably when it rains, straight up. Yeah, I think the, 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 the idea is you only wear them when it's really hot. You know, on a really hot summer's <laughs> day, you 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 just you just whack them up inside the sleet, the cuff of your jacket, and and off you go. But I mean, it was just. Even even that, once you once you got gloves on, it's a pain in the bum to do to to fiddle about with all this guff. So yeah, I wasn't a fan. What about you? Uh, does it have to be bike related? No, anything at all. Absolutely. Anything. Oh right, okay. Uh, a Land Rover Discovery for a hundred quid. <laughs> oh sorry, no, it was a hundred quid. This, <laughs> no, that was the, this is the next one. Oh yeah, this is the other the hundred one. quid. Hundred quid was the hundred um, quid ones. The one where. No, the best hundred quid you've ever spent. Yeah, right. Go on, yeah. a Land Rover Discovery. Yeah, right. yeah. Uh, just, just a, just a. Honestly, they're just. You would think, in with today's manufacturing technology, yeah. that the and for a vehicle that had been in development for so long, you know, I'd gone through so many different models, and. It's just shit. Yeah. I just, I mean, I'm sure that there's people, I'm sure you're, a lot of your fans have got, uh, will have a discovery as well. And I, maybe I just ended up with the one that was particularly bad, but I ended up one with, with, you know, it, was, it wasn't a cheap truck, you know, mm-hmm. it was brand new, top of the range, end of line as well. So they were chucking everything into yeah. it, like DVDs, heated steering wheel and all of this stuff. But the damn thing was never out of the garage. Was it not? I've, I've, I've known yeah. a couple of other people say exactly the same thing. Exactly the same thing about them. So, yeah. I mean, fantastic ride. You know, it's a great, really nice driving position yeah. and great for taking it off-road if, if, if you were 
so inclined, but no, nah, that's probably the. I I, um, probably... I I bought a Tuono. I've spoken about this before. I bought I bought the V4R Tuono back in two thousand and. 15, I think it was 2014, 2015. I'd always nice. wanted a Tuono. You know, they sound yeah. amazing. I think yeah. they look amazing. They're fantastic riding bikes. And it was an absolute pig to live with. Oh, really? Yeah. When it worked, it was amazing. Yeah. But it was, I mean, everyone says that about Italian bikes, don't they? You know, eh, it's an Italian bike. What do you expect? And I always thought, well, that's ridiculous. Not in this day and age. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, but even Ducati have, Ducati have picked it up, haven't they? You know, Ducati seem to be doing that's well. The, it's the, is that not the sort of influence of their German owners? Could well be, yes, yes. But it's it's doing the job, isn't it? So oh, fantastic. yeah. Um, but yeah, it was just an utter pig to live with, this Aprilia. I was gutted, absolutely gutted, because it was uh, it was such a beautiful bike to listen to. What sort of problems were you having with it? Um, after four and a bit thousand miles, the valve clearances needed doing because um, every time you rolled off the throttle, so if you, if you came up to a junction or up to a roundabout, so you're, you're not stopping, but you're, you know, you're, you're, you're off the gas, mm-hmm. pulling mm-hmm. in the clutch, rolling up, ready to go, ready to go, ready to go. The second you put the throttle back on, it would just die. So it would just conk out, which is not good when you're just trying to get out into a junction or out into a roundabout. Um, cold mornings it didn't want to start so you know for me in, in the old job at four or five o'clock in the morning it's not wanting to start so it's like, this, is not, yeah. this is not what i need <laughs> you know, yeah. it's too cold for it it just didn't feel, feel like playing but when it did work it yeah. was an amazing bike you know i managed i managed to do, do a, a, a trip a tour around uh, the pyrenees on it and it was just amazing when it worked. It was and to keep it within four thousand miles. Uh, well, that was brand new, so I'd literally I ran it in, and then went straight off on this trip. And by the time I'd got back, um, it was coming up for that sort of four, four and a bit thousand miles, and it just kept conking out all the time. And when I spoke with the dealership, they were like, "Oh, it needs its valve clearances done." I was just like, what? Like, you know, I'm, every 4,000 miles. Like, I've, got a jig, I've got a Jixxer in the garage. It's done 103,000 miles. And the valve clearances, all, they get they, they got checked, you know, every, yeah. uh, what was it? Every 16,000 miles. But it's never, ever needed them yeah. to do it, ever. You know, they're still bang on, even after what it's okay. been through. And this thing had 4,000 miles in it, and it was way out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so Jesus. Oh. Oh, that's that thing. Never mind. Never mind. <clears throat> yeah, no, that would, that would, um, that would take the shine off yeah, of that it, purchase, it wouldn't it? Yeah. And then a mate of mine just bought a brand new one last year, two years ago. He, he bought the new one, the factory, I think it was. And um, oh. yeah, he's had he's had no end of issues with it, electrical issues and all sorts. But oh, really, no well, I've, I've I mean, my my bikes, my bikes, two thousand and twelve, um, one of the first of the German ownership uh-huh. uh, versions. And uh, I've had I've had to replace um, a wiring loom um, because one of the the, the live um, the the red wire <laughs> blue right. um, so um, I had to repair that replace it um, but you know what other than that and then oh yeah and occasionally you can just be uh, hammering along. Uh, the last was the last summer. I was tanking along in the west coast somewhere, pulled in the clutch, and uh, just going down the gears to to pull into a, a layby just to give myself a break. And uh, the engine cut out before I even got anywhere near stopping. You know, oh, no. um, I just and it just wouldn't. It was. It must have been an electrical fault because the engine wouldn't turn over. Right. Physically, wouldn't turn over. So I left it. Um, smoked a fag. Uh, Left it and then uh, start turned the key, started and it went fine. Oh, so yeah, it was fine. Never, <laughs> never done anything, but yeah, you got a lot. You, I think, you know, I think to own one of these bikes, uh, certainly of that era, <clears throat> I think you need to be mechanically minded mm. and electrically minded. Yeah, I was going to say electrically <laughs> now these days for sure. Yeah, um, you know, because the, because they do need a little bit of attention. I think that's I don't know why it was. Like for for me, I I I I totally accept bikes will go wrong, especially if you're using them. If you're actually out riding them, you know, 
yeah. a lot all year round, or whatever. If you're putting the miles in, you're going to get issues with bikes. For me, it's how they're handled, and for for that for that Aprilia, it was. It, it was annoying that I was having the issues, but in my head, I was like, well, it'll just get fixed and, you know, it's under warranty and that'll be that. But I, mm-hmm. the, the service from the dealership, and I'll not say who it was, but there was a, the, the service from the dealership was abysmal. So it's just the whole ownership experience. I was just like, you know what? I'm not in for this. So I ended up getting another Jigsaw then, yeah. and then, and then eventually moved to the dark side. And that was that. So anyway. Yeah, yeah. It's funny that, isn't it? The customer customer experience is is. Uh, I just don't think that there's enough uh, training goes on in customer experience, mm. uh, and it varies so much between dealer to dealer. Yeah, it does. Yeah, and, yeah. and person to person, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. And and I I you know I I hate getting I hate coming away from somewhere thinking I've had shit customer service, you know. So um, yeah, totally. it's one of the things. It's one of the things that I've been absolutely obsessive about in our business is uh, customer service. Well, uh, that's the sort of thing that that punters, customers, customers won't forget that. You know, if they go somewhere and they don't think they've had good good customer service, I I certainly do. If I if I go somewhere and I've not had customer service, then very rarely is there a second chance. I'm just like, oh, okay, plenty of others. I'll just go somewhere else then. You know, yeah. where that means I've got to pay yeah. a bit more, travel a bit further. Fine. I'll just, yeah. I'll just go for yeah. it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Vote with your feet. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Cheers for that one, Louise. Next one, Charlie Callard. Evening, all. Hope you're both well. All good. Thanks, Charlie. So, as these days, there are no real bad bikes. Are there any real bad helmets apart from the Chinese copies, of course? Oh. Oh. Can you go into that? Um, I, well, it all comes back to certainly in the UK, you've got ECE 2205, mm-hmm. which is a standard that helmets must meet as a minimum before they're allowed to be, uh, before they're permitted to be sold in the UK mm-hmm. legally. Um, that's now, that standard has now evolved to 2206, which I think becomes uh, it's ma- mandatory, I think, sometime mm, maybe even middle of this year, if not already. Um, you know, so the, the fact is that any helmet that you can buy uh, legally in the UK has to have that uh, that that standard. Mm-hmm. So it has the helmet has achieved a standard to a, to a, a certain level. So <clears throat> you know, what more do you? What more would you want from from a helmet mm. other than the fact it's so? Even your forty quid helmets that are sold in Holfords and places like that, they will all be. They will all at least have met ECE twenty two oh five safety standard. Yeah, you know, so, I've, I've I did a review. I got given the LS two Pioneer Evo. I think it was called. It's like the and it, have I got it here? No, it's not here. But basically, it's it's an adventure style helmet. You know, with a peak on it. Okay, but it's made yeah. by LS two, who you know, yeah, uh, are traditional, very budget brand. And this yeah. this lid you can buy for seventy quid, seventy yeah. quid, and I'm not kidding you. Okay, yeah. okay, the lining, the lining. If you were to wear it every single day, then I would probably think after a year, it's going to get a little bit tatty on the inside. That, that you know, that I don't think the light the lining certainly didn't feel as plush and as um, durable as the likes of you know your shoeys, your arais, things like that. But then this thing's yeah. 70 quid. Whereas that's, yeah. you know, that lid there's what, 500 quid, 600 quid, something like that. Yeah. Well, gee yeah. whiz, you just get a new one every year then. You know, 70 quid. Yeah. It's nothing. Yeah, absolutely. Well, they, it's probably a polycarbonate shell yes. as well, which is, is a much cheaper uh, manufacturing process. Mm. But it's the downside is that polycarbonate is heavier mm-hmm. than its equivalent of um, a composite. So, yeah, but that's, and, and yeah, they're maybe not, you know, using the, Finest of um, um, Chinese silk or whatever it is on the on the cheek pads. I know that I know that you you need that for <laughs> for your face. Um, but but yeah, then they'll be using budget materials, budget helmet, budget materials. Absolutely. But, but it, it but did not feel it didn't feel like there was five hundred quid difference. Put it that way. 
Yeah, you know, I, yeah. It, it certainly didn't. And as you said, if it's past the safety standards, I was like, oh, blimey. Having said all of that, given the choice, I'll wear my shoey for sure. Because I've, you know, I've, I've literally slid off the side of a mountain in Germany at 130 mile an hour wearing a shoey. And okay, and I survived. So the helmet was split, you know, it literally split from there right down to there, but I survived. Yeah. So for me, it's like that's the that's the lid I'm going with, you know, that's the brand I'm gonna stick with for sure. So uh, absolutely. I mean that coming off on I mean I I think about this quite a lot because I'm I'm not the most maybe not the most law abiding <laughs> citizen rider when I'm out over on the west coast. In towns, yeah. no problem yeah, at all, yeah. right? But you know, if you're out on the if you're out on those twisty roads and uh, just you've got good periphery vision and bat, batter on, as I say. Mm. Um, but I do think about you know because it's only the only impact test these helmets it's something like seven meters per second, right? Right. So that's the that's you know it only needs to you're going a lot more than needs, that, yeah. <laughs> It only needs to to survive an impact of seven meters per second, and you've got your certification. Mm. There you go; you can sell that. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, but then you know the other side of it to look at is these lids are worn by your MotoGP, your World Supers, your British Superbike riders, and they are having you know big, big crashes wearing them, big spills. And they're but doing. I think you'll. I think you'll. So there's a couple of couple of differences there, right? So my observation, it's just my observation, is when you're coming off on a, a, a superbike, you're very rarely going up high. Yeah. And you're and you're Slated. very rarely, very rarely hitting yeah. a signpost. Granted, yeah. You know, tree. Um, <laughs> tree yeah. you know, tractor or whatever, yeah. you know. You're, you're sliding, so the impact isn't. You know, you're not you're not getting so much of a an impact. It's just that sort of um, friction that you need to. Um, so it's there are two very very different so, yeah, scenarios. Totally, totally, but then you know, conversely, they're travelling at much higher speeds than the vast. Well, oh. I would say suggest any of us are, you know, on a regular basis oh, most of us. Out, out on the roads. And the MotoGP boys, <laughs> yes. they are going through quite a few mm. high sides at the moment. Yeah, yeah quite yeah, a few yeah. highs. Mar- Mar- Marcus. Marcus. Oh. Jeez. Oh my goodness. How did he get up? How did know. he get up from that high side? Oh, that Jeez. was just mad. God. Yeah. Have you watched? We're getting way off topic here. Um, have you watched the MotoGP Unlimited? The series? <gasps> On Netflix. Oh my yeah. I've watched the first first episode, I, I, okay. I, so I watched the first no, one. No spoilers. Oh, I, I had to I binged it. I had to sit and watch the whole thing in one hit one hit. It is awesome. It's awesome. I've got to admit, I was fairly ignorant about this new breed of of riders that were coming in. You know, I heard the names, but I hadn't really followed MotoGP much in the last couple of years. And it's just, I'm totally bitten by the bug now. It's like, oh yeah, I've got to follow it, see what's going on. Uh, I love, I mean, you know, a a season without MotoGP is is a tough year, Mm. you know, just to not be able to watch it on the TV. The other thing that I really miss is... uh, Isle of Man TT yeah, yeah, yeah. as well. You know, I just, oh, I think it's coming back this year. It is, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going. I'm, I'm there this year. I've, I'm going over. Are you? Yeah, yeah. Um, a pal of mine, Superb. Fultz, he, he might actually leave a, yeah, yeah, he's left a question. Um, he booked it for us three years ago. Yeah, two, yeah. three years ago. And it's just been obviously yeah. cancelled every year since. So this yeah. is the first time we've got the chance to go. So I can't wait. Cannot wait. Uh, I mean, you know, my missus, when Gardner's world is on, <laughs> you just don't go anywhere near her, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm the same with the TT. Yeah. I'm the same with the TT. Do, 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 whatever it is, it'll wait till this is over. Yeah, so, really uh, can't wait. Uh, it's going to be good fun. Yeah. Big, big kahunas those boys have got. Yeah. Crazy. Absolutely mm. crazy. I've um, I've chatted with Dom Harbertson, you know, from Chasing the Racing. Okay. Have you listened to that podcast? I, I, no, I do know the podcast, mm. but I haven't. don't think I've... Yes, Chrissy anyway, Rice yeah. and Dom Horvitzson. Chrissy's um, he's BSB this year, and uh, Dom, he's a road racer. He does the TT. So you know, just just chatting to both of them. You know, although it's riding bikes, totally totally different disciplines. Yeah. And man, the pair of them, 
minerals way larger than I think I'll ever ever possess. Yeah. Fair play. Yeah. Um, so I, I um, yeah, I think um, uh, Peter Hickman. Yeah. Um, Hickey. Uh, I, I like I like to see the the road road the road guys doing the the track stuff short as well. Short circuit stuff, yeah, yeah, the short circuit stuff. I love I love to see them, you know, how they perform yeah. differently on both of those environments. Absolutely. McGuinness as well, yeah. Um, you know, yeah. Uh, Hickman's a lovely guy. He 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 kindly came on the podcast in the early days as well. It was, that was that was an experience chatting to him on the podcast. Brilliant, nice guy. Very nice guy. He's a super guy. Yes. I've, I've heard him speak at uh, some of these events as well. And yeah, really, uh, really nice manner about the guy, you know. And he's a big lump as well. You know, he's about, I think, oh, I think oh, he's yeah. about 6'1", six 6'2". Six he's, he's a tall guy. You know, I'm six foot, I'm six foot tall and he's, he's taller than me. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how he does. Like, so the last TT that I was watching, uh, what is it? The Super Sport, Super Sport, uh, bikes the 600, 600 class mm -hmm. yeah so he's on the triumphs i think it was the 675 triumph right mm -hmm. i had a, a 675 <laughs> yeah. daytona yeah, yeah. right and I, I, honestly i could i, I couldn't go I, I can do 400 miles in the panigale in a day no problem at all right maybe couldn't do the same miles the following day yeah. but i can do out and back 400 miles one day next day i'm fine on the Daytona, oh my goodness! I was, I'd be, I'd be crying for my mummy, <laughs> half halfway back from a long run like that. It's just such a compact bike, it you know. It's, it just feels like that. so. How Hickey manages to to do that? No idea. Must fold no himself idea. up onto it. I think he does, yeah. Uh, right, Charlie's <clears throat> yeah. got a second question. It says also, which yeah. would you prefer, chocolate digestive or chop chip or chalk chip biscuit? Chalk chip. Chalk chip. Chalk chip. Every day. Every day. Although I, I wouldn't turn my nose up, obviously, at a chocolate digestive. <laughs> got to be said. <laughs> got to be said. I could problem the problem is I get so my missus buys these chocolate hobnobs, which oh. are like the digest, digest, digestives, the but they've got cane. this. It's, it's, oh, right. And I go in, I, this is this is just my personality down to, down to a T, but I'll go in and I'll go, oh, I quite fancy one of them. I'll maybe take two out of the packet and then come back to my desk and then uh, coffee. Uh, then I'll just go back and get the rest of the packet. Yeah, yeah. I'm one stage it's ahead a, you of you. Know, I, I I don't even yeah. go. I'll just take two. I'm like, well, it's open. If I open this, <laughs> the packet's gone. So I may as well just take the packet. <laughs> Inhaled. <laughs> yeah, gone. Can't do anything till I finished it. It's just like I must eat, must eat. Gone. Right. Let's uh, move oh, on. It's just like just like crack, isn't it? Really. <laughs> certain certain things are like that. So yeah, was it uh, chocolate chip? Yeah, um, chocolate chip biscuit or chalky digestive? Chocolate chip. Cho chocolate chip. Yeah, that, yeah that's all my. Yeah, yeah. Those cheap ones, you know, those cheap ones you can get, the chop chip cookies. They're like, something's like ATP or something for a, a big long packet of them. You get them in the supermarkets. I can't remember what they're called. They're, they're really cheap, but oh man, they just, they just don't last. Just eat them. I well, the problem, the other problem as well is my eldest, I've got three teenage daughters, right? right. And uh, my eldest daughter, she's got a part-time job at Aldi. Right. Right. So whenever she, I mean, she works with three, three, equivalent of three days a week, you know, but whenever she's on shift, I'm texting her, I'm going, right, I want these and I want that. I want, <laughs> buy, uh, get me some gin as well. Yeah. Huh, half a dozen bottles. What's in the middle of <laughs> What's in the chainsaw? I need a chainsaw yeah. as well. That's right. She doesn't get it. She doesn't understand the, the joke about the middle aisle, you know. Youngins these days, mate. Eh? Youngins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did we answer that lad's uh, that person's question? I think we have. I think we have. Yeah. yeah. It was it was a difficult one. <laughs> Just that, Charlie. Next one, Lee Vigar. How you doing, Lee? Lee was on the other week. That's uh, Buddy oh, the Biker. Yeah. Buddy the Biker Dog, the yeah. He says, uh, hi guys, hope you're both well. Firstly, to both, what is your favourite helmet, past or present, and do you still have it? Ooh. Ooh. Oh, I know the answer to this. Go on, well, I know the answer to both both parts of that. Go on, it was uh, an RI, 
and it was the remember when the Yamaha brought out the liquid cooled two fifty and three fifty. The LC two fifty and the LC three fifty. Before my time, I'm, I was late to this. Two thousand and eight, I joined the old biking world. Right. Okay. So what they did? Go and look. Go and look them up. I mean, you must have seen the LCs, though. I probably have. Two, two strokes. So they had this really distinctive uh, paint job, right? It, was a, it wasn't. It wasn't an RI. It was a Bell. It's a Bell helmet, right? Right. And Bell introduced this um, limited run of uh, Yamaha RD LC uh, helmets. So they did them in the uh, Mars bar color, which is the black and red, and and they did them in the white and blue. So it was a Bell helmet, super cool at the time. Just, I mean, nobody had seen anything like this. And... uh, we had uh, our uh, my 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 parents had a couple of motorbike shops up in Elgin and Inverness, and we were a Yamaha dealer. Right, and we used to get we used to get the dealers would get a, a number of these helmets. So, <laughs> you bags uh, one. I bags it one. Yeah, uh, I don't I, I don't have it anymore. So that's but that I mean it was probably it was probably as effective as putting up. An empty crisp packet on your head. <laughs> Don't matter. You look cool. <laughs> it looked cool. Yeah, that's like, what it's all about, though, isn't it, Bruce? I think my first, my first lid is the one that sticks with me, just because it was, it was my first lid. You know, it was part of me getting into biking. So, yeah. believe it or not, my first helmet, and the, the 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 showroom saw me coming a mile off. Because for my first ever bike, I bought a big windows. Uh, no, I bought a brand. Yeah, I I bought a brand new GSXR six hundred. Was my first ever bike. Dionysi mm-hmm. two piece leathers, the squeaky city boots, the whole shebang, and a shoey Spirit lid. But it was the Chris Vermeulen paint job. You know the yellow one with the the blue sort I don't, of ace. I don't, I don't know it. Oh, right. beautiful! I, I just still an X Spirit. Yeah, you know, top top of the that range. Track. Yeah, track lead. Yeah. Yeah. For, 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 for 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 me here, that's just past this day. I wore that on yeah. my CBT and on my DAS <laughs> and everything like that. Two piece Dionysi leathers, squeaking my way as I'm walking through the car park. <laughs> Brilliant. But yeah, that that one sticks with me just because I I really liked. I still think that's one of my favourite paint jobs. That that yellow Christopher Mullen style. I'll need to look it up. Loved I'll it. need to look it beautiful, up. Beautiful. Yeah. Actually, the we one. See, we... the, the one. The helmet I was wearing when I crashed in Germany had the, the big off. That was the Xperit 2, because I... What happened to that one? I think, yeah, the first one, I think I just got to like five years. and No, it wasn't even five. It would have been three years. And um, I, I decided I need a new helmet, so I bought the Xperit 2 in the Chris Vermeule and paint shop. And then that's <laughs> the one that I split into. Yeah. Mm. Well, never mind. Yeah, we we get some cracking helmet designs coming through. I, bet. Um, I mean, you know, not it just they're they're main, they are predominantly off the shelf designs, but nevertheless, we're still getting some cracking looking lids yeah. through. Yeah, I think I'm. I don't know what's happening with it, but um, uh, Phil Phil Dranfield from from Paint Nation, he was going to be doing a custom lid for me, but you know, it's it's not something I'd commissioned. He approached me about doing it. So we, okay. we did a few vids on it last year, but I haven't heard anything from him since. So, you know, I don't I don't know if it's still happening. I, I've got no idea. You know, I don't want to push because it's, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm not paying for yeah. it or anything. So, but I don't know if it's yeah. happening or not. So did, did you have a design? Did you settle on a design? We we had the initial, that was, we, I did a video of it. It was just like a, a sort of d- initial design consultation phase where we basically, we just brainstormed ideas onto a bit of paper. And then from that, yeah. he would go away and he would come up with a, like the first stage conceptual design that I'd, I'm assuming I'd then sign off on. And that is what he would paint. But um, I've, I've literally, I've literally never heard from him since. So I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's happening. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I know he's really busy with, the professional racers that he does and his and his job. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it and see. That's, that's really expensive. Uh, um, I think it can be. Yeah, it can be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> it always surprises me. You know, someone pays 
you know, five, six, seven hundred quid for a helmet, mm. and then the first thing they do is get a different paint job yeah. put on it. You know, I, know. <laughs> I think if you're a, if you're Moto GP or a BSB rider, then yeah, yeah. You, you can understand why that why they would do that. But uh, for a consumable item mm. that's only going to last three to five years, yeah, yeah. you're spending, you know, you're doubling the cost easily. Yeah, I just. I've just got this thing about being like everybody else. So I, I, I will generally, if I'm buying a lid like that, you know, I, I get it black. See the black one that's there. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. I'll just get a plain yep. black one or a plain white one. Yep. And then <clears throat> this one, that one I, I got with the TV show last year, motorbike TV. So, you, you know, it was, it was the best, it was the best supermarket sweep I've ever done in my life, literally into Shuey, into their their distribution place. And it was like, right, yeah. pick three lids. It was just like, oh my God. Right? <laughs> it was awesome. All right. You know, you had to, had to pick a, a, an adventure style one, a road style yeah. one. And then yeah. uh, we had to go for like a cafe racer style one. So yeah so it's just like oh i'll have that one i'll have that one you felt really naughty walking out without paying for anything it's like, oh, what's, <laughs> someone's gonna come after me <laughs> yeah that's your that's your mint law upbringing isn't it, it? Is, you I, get I, away I, with it <laughs> yeah. um right secondly yeah. from lee to martin in your professional opinion what's the best helmet on the market make and model mm. oh my goodness yeah, yeah. that's gonna See, open up the uh, <laughs> the gates Oh, God, damned if you do and damned if you don't hear it. Um, it's, it's a difficult one for me. I've, I mean, I've got my own personal view, mm-hmm. right? But I I don't um I don't I don't have personally I don't have experience of wearing a lot of different types of helmets. Yeah. Um I've got an opinion based on the technical data and the type of manufacturing of a number of helmets. Um, but, you know, that's, that's just, that's just m- the opinion of one guy mm-hmm. who's, uh, who doesn't have the experience of say someone like you, who's got quite a lot of experience of reviewing helmets mm-hmm. and doing all sorts of things like that. So I would say um, anything that's, ECE 2206. I know Lee's going to rib me for this because we're connected on LinkedIn. He's going to rib me for uh, dodging the question. So um, <clears throat> thanks for the question, Lee. Uh, could, can I be non-committal? Go on. Yeah, yeah. Just go for something that's ECE 2206. Yeah. Right. Okay, then. So <clears throat> that's fair enough because then th- then it's met, it's met the basic safety standards in order to to have that classification okay in your own personal um opinion what do you think's the best lid so what's your personal choice uh, what would i buy yeah. with your own right, money what so, would you buy yeah i would buy a rurock yeah yeah mm. yeah i was going to um, ask about them <clears throat> Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, because I, I um, had the Atlas 2.0. I got given the Atlas 2.0, and I loved it. You know, I, and I, I did a couple of vids on it, and I got a yeah. lot of flack from people saying, you know, these things aren't safe. How can you possibly, um, you know, promote mm-hmm. something like this? It's not safe. And I was just like, but well, it is safe. You know, it's just it hasn't. It just didn't at the time. It didn't have the gold badge. I hadn't. It didn't get the gold badge accreditation for to be used on track. I wore it on the track, yeah. but. Can't see anything. Oh, oh, no, I'm just, oh, that's an excellent. Let's try that again. Yeah, oh, that's a, sorry. But I was going to say that that doesn't have the ACU sticker on it. Right. Well, now they do, don't they? I think the the latest Rurox now actually do have them. Um, actually, I don't know if they, I don't know if they are ACU. Because um, uh, well, maybe maybe it's the E E E, e whatever it is. EC, it's the ECE twenty two. Yeah. They've definitely got ECE twenty two or six because. They were only one of like um, at the time, one of five helmets, and I don't mean manufacturers. I mean, out of a cast of thousands of models of helmets, there were only one of five that had gone out there. There, I, I know, I know, I know a couple of the guys. I know the head of engineering at Rurock, mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> and uh, I know that the they are acutely aware of perceptions that have been built up mm-hmm. 
in previous models and yeah. the criticism that they've had. And they focus they focus so hard on turning that around. Right. And I think that's what they've done with uh, Atlas 4.0. They've, they've gone out, they've got that 2206 accreditation, cert- certification, sorry, I should say, <clears throat> and more. If, if you look at the results for their accredit for their certification, they've not only met it, but they've gone way above, mm. way above what the standard is. They've introduced um uh, 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 impact absorption material called Rion into the into the liner. Right. What Rion does is a it slows down the it slows down the shock wave that gets transmitted through the helmet mm. to your brain, and it's basically that that we're trying to. That's what that's what a helmet is. That's what it's it's so well. Its sole purpose is to slow down that shock wave that goes to your brain and uh if you you know without that slowing down of the shock wave that shock just passes straight through your skull mm. and and then hits your brain and then th- that's what causes all the shearing and the, yeah. the damage to uh, fatalities basically yeah. from impacts so they've so going back to the guys at Rue Rocks, they've introduced rion into their helmets uh, they probably talk about that on their website as well. They've probably got videos on it as well. And I think that's really encouraging because they could have probably got that certification without putting Rion into mm. into the, the helmet. They're, 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 a, they're a company that, um, you know, are, are just pushing the, the, the – they're, they're not set – they're not resting on their laurels, like I think that's what I'm trying to say, Bruce. They're, they're um, very social media savvy. PR marketing. I think they're the best one by far for that. Without a doubt. Their, their customer service was poor, sadly, which, mm-hmm. what, which is what really mm-hmm. let them down. But they, they yeah. launched the Atlas 2.0, but it it was so popular, it caught them massively off guard because they didn't, well, they, they didn't have the supply to cope with the demand. Plus, right. I think it was around about the same time. It was about the same time COVID hit, plus the Suez Canal issue happened, which oh, just God, screwed yeah. up worldwide logistics. So it yeah. was just like the worst things that could possibly happen to a like a startup company that's just done this yeah. massive, not, they're not startup, they've been around for a while, but they've just done yeah. this massive launch for the 2.0 into the bike world, you know, like we're here. And yeah. I, th- I think they're the best looking lids. You know, I think they're a great looking lid. That magnetic yeah. chin strap is awesome. I wish all lids had it. Um, uh-huh. Yeah, but it was the customer service that really let them down. And yeah, that, yeah. Well, I, <clears throat> I hope I hope that that's changed. I, I just see the the hard work and the, and I, I, I like the fact that they're very approachable mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. Um, they're a British company as well, aren't they? Based in Gloucester, yeah. yeah, yeah, which is something yeah. they don't they don't market that, you know, because I think they're trying to go for the American market, but um, you know, yeah, I, and I think I think that's most of their sales are in the US. Yeah, yeah. It's a big market for them. So, but yeah, um, I, I think it would, my my next purchase would be a Rurock mm. um, four point zero. Certainly, they've got they've also got a lot of the integration for the comms and the yeah, you know, it's all really just the details. They've really worked out some really fine detail there, mm. um, and they're innovating in other ways as well. They've got that chain app. I don't know if you're aware of that. No, uh, I can't have a look at that. It's um, it basically it's a it's a a, ride, a app for the riders. Um, anyone could use it. You don't need to have a Rurock intercom system. It's um, and it basically just works very similar to WhatsApp voice. So it uses that same sort of um, technology and the protocol as WhatsApp does. Right. So it uses data rather than uh, Bluetooth or mesh. Mm-hmm. So you could have someone who's 16 miles away, the other side of a hill. Ah, oh, right. Uh, in, your, in your group. Mm. And you can still speak to them, providing you've got the data, the data signal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's and you can just add as many people. Because yeah. I remember when when they gave when they gave me the Atlas two point they were making a big thing about the shock using the shockwave integrated comms, but I didn't realize maybe they didn't have the app at that time because it was just a Bluetooth comms 
unit you know and i yeah. i obviously i i'm a not an ambassador but i push the cardo pack top bold because I, I think it's the best one out there at the moment so i was just like well yeah. why would why why would you bother with the bluetooth when you got you know that does a way better job than it but that sounds pretty good actually working off of but then it comes down to your data doesn't it what if you're what if you're traveling abroad then your data is going to go sky high like if you're touring and things like that yeah i mean there's you know it's not flawless no, is it no, no. but um but certainly i think you could still around the uk if you've got free data brilliant isn't it that's mm-hmm. that's a fantastic yeah. system to have yeah yeah, yeah Rurock. I'm, um, I'm surprised you said that actually, but I'm I'm quite chuffed you did because it's it's nice to see like the the new blood, the young blood, sort of coming to the fore and, and getting promoted like that for sure. Yeah, I, I just I also I mean I might probably mentioned it earlier, but I just see how hard these guys work, mm-hmm. you know, to overcome all the challenges that they have, yeah. and it's not just challenges from their supply chain, and it's you know it's challenges from a very very dominant market. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, oh god, yeah. Yeah. A very conservative yeah. dominant market. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh right, that was Lee. Cheers for that, Lee. Lee. Thank yep. you, pal. Next one, Mark Fulcher. There we go. Help me ducks. We'll keep this short and sweet this week. My question for you both. Whose is the best helmet that you've ever inspected? Expected. <laughs> Inspected. Take that however you want to. <laughs> right. Okay. Are there any helmets that have come in that have really stuck stood out? Um, that you can say, obviously. That's, that's a really that's a, that's a really really unusual question, isn't it? He, so he's a very unusual guy, Fitch. <laughs> this is who I'm going to the TT with. <laughs> Sounds like you're going to have a laugh. Um, oh, aye, helmet will. inspections. Uh, yeah, I mean the innuendo is a hundred percent by design, you know. But um, it's you know. Listen, if you've inspected another helmet, feel free. If it's the best one you've ever inspected, feel free. Yeah, um, we've 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 inspected some unusual um, customers' helmets. <laughs> Right, um, the Met Police, I would say. Oh, buy me, have um, you? Mm-hmm. They probably nicked it. The SEG. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, for Lara Moto, she came in. We did. We did hers for for her. Hers was absolutely shagged. She just. Was it? Uh, it was just. I mean, I talk about one of those people who goes down down the roads. Try to save their their low side with the side of their head, yeah. you know. Oh, is that her racing yeah, was, was it? Yeah, she was one of those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's a nice, last uh, Lara. Very nice. Oh, she's wonderful, isn't mm-hmm. she? She's, um, and uh, yeah, she spent a bit of time with our our tech director, uh, John Professor John, um, because she's actually an engineer uh-huh. as well, yeah. and uh, she's very interested in doing a PhD in. Uh, so, uh, PhD in the the, the subjects that uh, John teaches right. as well. So, oh, excellent. Um, so yeah, Lana had a very interesting helmet. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to chat to her about that. <laughs> that that'll be in the trailer. Maybe it's maybe that's not the answer. So obviously, <laughs> your, your mate was out looking for you. Oh man, there's so much I could say, but I'm not gonna. Um, no, I know. Fulch, secondly. Can we just ban the plastic clunk click helmets and keep on trotting with a good old D shackle? Yes, chin straps. Oh, so this is just, you know, you were just saying how you like the, Mag- the, the magnetic, magnetic one. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. What's your opinion on them? On I've never I've never used one. I've, I've always just used the, the D lock. Yeah, me, me too. But some, especially some of the cheaper lids, they have like the 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 Oh, like a plastic clip. Oh, yeah, like the seat belt clunk clip type thing uh, in fact ah, yeah, yeah, some yeah, of the yeah. some of the ones i wore in the met had that as well okay and um it just it just annoyed me why, why can't they just be the good old-fashioned d-ring D- yeah d-ring yeah. yeah uh don't know i don't really have an opinion on that mm. i think it's you know if it's past the safety test then I think ultimately that's that's the thing isn't it pardon me if it's past the safety tests then it's past the safety tests. It's obviously safe enough, but no, yeah. I, I prefer I prefer the, the 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 magnetic chin strap on the 
Rurok is awesome. Awesome. Okay. Just so right. easy. So easy. Right. I, I wish I really missed that, you know, because my, my shoeies have all got the D the D ring. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, yeah, I missed I missed the magnetic chin chin strap. Well, there you go. There's an excuse to go shopping again, then, Bruce. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Plumbing four. Tell you what, if you send us all of your helmets, we'll fail every single one of them. So you'll have to go and I'll have to. buy a new yeah, helmet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think I bought my bridges with uh, with Rurock. So yeah. <laughs> oh, have you? Uh, I just uh, I've I've chatted about it before on here. I they asked me to run a competition when they launched the Atlas 2.0, and the winner yeah. of the competition would would get a free lid. So yeah. I ran it, picked a winner. And about four months later, he still hadn't been sent his lid, despite me chasing it up and him chasing it up. Uh, and right. you know that that doesn't it doesn't reflect good on me because yeah. effectively I'm promoting this company. So I basically chased them up again, and they 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 basically told me they've been having all these logistics issues. But then I'd also seen on other social media posts them presenting lids to lots of other people, and I was just like, well. If you've got lids to what's they're not, they're not taking them back after the photographs were well, taken. I, I don't know, but it was also it's a lack of communication, you know, with with uh, the winner. Yeah, that's yeah. that's also what got me. It's like, yeah, yeah, okay, if, yeah. you, if you're having if you're having logistics issues, fine, but keep the customer updated, and they just weren't yeah. doing anything like that. So uh, I basically said, look, I don't, I, I can't, I can't be seen to represent that. That's I I'm, I don't want to be part of that. So we'll, I would, I would agree we'll with call that. it quits now. That. So yeah. that was that. So yeah, I don't think I don't think they'll be rushing to give me a new lead <laughs> anytime soon. Well, I just uh, I I do exactly. I mean, we talked about customer service. We touched on that earlier on. It's occasionally we get let down by our courier. Mm. You know, uh, they they'll, uh, they'll they're supposed to come every day and collect orders, collect the return shipping orders from us. Uh, and this, there was one time just recently where um, they had come every single day, but they'd just gone to the wrong place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so they'd not collected any of our helmets, any of our customer helmets. And of course, you want to know, you know, if, if you, there's a there's a there's a level of sort of anxiety there. People just want to get their helmet back. Oh. You know, they've got their test result. They want to get it back, back into their own hands when they know it's when they know it's safe. So uh, yeah, uh, I I picked up on this that the, the courier hadn't hadn't been, and so um, you got to put yourself into the customer's shoes. You know, so phone the customer up, just say, look, I'm really sorry, but I, do, I don't know what's happened here. I don't know why the courier hasn't collected, but I'll do my best to try and sort this out. And I'll call you back and let you know how things are nah, going. Can't ask any more, can and you? And you just, you just communicate mm -hmm. these things. Yeah, I mean, yeah. everyone, everyone knows that, you know, we don't own the courier firm. So... Mm. <laughs> but, you know, communication is vital, isn't it? Absolutely. In any... In any, any um, any uh, customer experience that you've got, any contact with the customer, communication's vital. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. Right, next one. Debbie Clegg. How you doing, Debbie? Hi, all. Can I ask, are stickers, the decal type, on helmets actually a bad thing? Do they make any difference to the safety of the outer shell, for example? No. No, nothing? No, no. no. Because they, um, they've got... Uh, they, well... <laughs> Traditionally, the shell has got a gel coat on it, mm -hmm. so um, putting the stickers on it um, doesn't. No, no. I mean, how you know, showy. It's a sticker, yeah. yeah. And that actually goes un that actually goes underneath the gel coat as well. Yeah, so it's, it's so, yeah, uh, lack of that gel coat thing goes over the top, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah now, yeah. this is obviously something that that I've thought about. All this gubbins that we put on helmets, you know, your chin mounts yeah. and we've got comms yeah. units and all yeah. this sort of stuff. Now, yeah. the 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 whispers out there are that, that that's what did the damage to Schumacher, to Michael Schumacher, when he was skiing. So he had he had a GoPro on his helmet. And he uh -huh. uh, what I've heard might not be true is that he took almost a, a direct hit onto the mount where the GoPro goes and it, it basically punctured through the helmet and into his, his skull. Now that's yeah. something that <clears throat> allegedly, because of that happening, you now aren't allowed to wear GoPros. You're not allowed to wear any helmet cameras 
on your helmet when you do a track day anymore. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because of that potential issue. Do you have any, I mean, I appreciate that's not something that you guys would test, but do you have any knowledge about that? Like, is that. Personally, uh, I mean, I I was going to try and show you there. I've got, I use a Senna uh, 10R, Uh which is just a wafer thin uh, profile uh, on the outside of the helmet. Mm. Wafer thin. I, I personally, I don't like sticking sticking these things onto my my lid. Yeah. Um, a because if they don't come off, um, or if they even if they do snap off and they've got the mount still there, let's say it's on the top of your head, those are the sort of things that cause rotational damage and an impact. Perhaps if you're sliding down the road, and you and it and, grips. And it grips, yeah, or it catches something, you know. Yeah. That's rotational damage, and that's that's uh, you know um, life life changing um, injuries you get from stuff like that. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. Um, there was something I was going to to ask, and again, it, it's probably not something that's covered by a helmet inspection company, but again, in case you you maybe have some some knowledge from the physics side of it or whatever. You were talking about that that U- Ruroc have that new liner that helps to dissipate Creon, Creon, yes. helps yeah. to dissipate yeah. the shock waves. Now, yeah. obviously, as motor vloggers, inside our helmets, we have all the cabling. So I've got yeah. the cabling from my lav mic, and <clears throat> now <throat> I've got the cabling from the the cardo unit going into some more cabling that's secreted all around the lid that allows me to mm-hmm. record. The, the comms. I, I can record mm-hmm. the chat on my comms now onto the GoPro vid coming soon. Yeah. Um, I just, just as you were talking, I thought, oh, I wonder if all that cabling inside the helmet, will that have any detrimental effect to the, to the sort of the job that the helmet's doing and dissipating forces? Um, I, I mean, I'm not, again, I'm not a technical mm. authority on that sort of thing. But, Dr. John um, to speak to for that. JT, yeah. Professor JT, yeah, it's, it's it's Marty and the Professor, as they sometimes... <clears throat> have you seen that? They're doing by. another one. I saw a trailer for Back to the Future 4. Whether... Oh, that's that's me and John that are doing it. It's, <laughs> it's you guys, is it? Yeah, yeah, we just have to go... We're, we're still waiting for the DeLorean. <laughs> it looked really good. I've got to say, the trailer looked really good. It'll be interesting to see how that. they do that, yeah. I haven't seen that, yeah. I only saw it the um, other day, and I did think to myself, "Is this is this an is this an April Fool's that I've only just seen?" I don't know, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, where did you see? Where did you see? It that? was on uh, Instagram, I think. No, okay. Yeah it, was, yeah, it was something that cropped up on Instagram, like you know these real okay, adverts go. that you get the sponsored ones yeah, that crop up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. something like that. I'm going to go have to look look for that. Um, I, I don't I don't know is the is the answer to that. You know, there's going to be test houses that would mm. that would uh, that would give you that definitive answer. What I do know through is through my own stupidity is that you know <clears throat> a lot of these helmets have got a uh, the, the EPS liner, mm. the ex- expanded polystyrene foam, is white. Yeah, mainly, um, and a lot of the helmet manufacturers will put a black coating on it in the inside. Oh. Right, so what that's what point you use that for a visual inspection for the inside of the EPS. So if it's starting to shrink or uh, expand or contract, um, what will happen is you'll start to see white speckles the white through it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, that's really good. Anybody can pick up their lid and have a look and and have a look and go, oh shit, okay, that's that's not looking too healthy. Mm-hmm. And maybe get a second opinion from the, the, the dealer or something like that, mm. you know. But I before I didn't know that either. You know, before I started going down this journey, I was, you know, I was clueless about a lot of these things on the helmets. And um, what I'd done is I taped in the cables with gaffer tape, yeah. you know, and then I started moving my comms units between the helmets as well. And all that black stuff just comes clean off. Sounds you know? familiar. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would, if you can avoid it, just yeah. don't use the tape because it is a it is a line of defence that you've got there, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and you you know it's, it's they put that black coating on for a reason. Mm. Yeah, I'm just thinking that might be something to to um, 
to investigate that. But then, to be honest, there's no other way of me doing it. So even if it does have a detrimental effect, I think I'd probably still, I'd still have to do it and I'd still have to wear the lid. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Well, it's a difficult one. And, and, and I think, well, <clears throat> so we, I don't know if anybody's going to ask the question. So I'll, 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 I'll come out with it just now, but we get asked quite a lot. Do we inspect the EPS liner? Mm -hmm. Uh, no, we don't. Remember, a composite test house. That's we test the composites on the on the shell. But um, our uh, so JT, the professor, he's involved with other uh, university projects where they they're uh, looking at the EPS liner on mountain bike helmets and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Same con same concept. So. Um, uh, Oh God, I forgot where I was going with this. Yeah, so what he was talking about is, what JT is talking about is that if you, uh, the, the liner, if you've, if you've taken an impact on the outer shell that's sufficient to damage the liner, the EPS, mm -hmm. um, it doesn't really matter about the EPS because you've already damaged the, you've already damaged the, yeah, the outer shell. shell. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's unlikely that you'll create damage to the EPS without having created damage to the outer shell. Got you. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. Right. So then looking at the inside of the helmet, you can then do your own visual inspection. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, I took a long time to get, to get the words out there, didn't I? I get you, though. I understand. I understand. Only going to get worse as well. <laughs> Jolly good. Uh, Debbie's got a second question. She says, also a random question. What was your first vehicle you rode or drove? Up to you, how you classify that, uh, I, as a kid or an adult? Have fun. So first, first vehicle you ever rode or drove, whether legally or not? Oh, oh, um, Honda XR75. It was a bike, was it? Uh -huh. All right, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, at the age of seven. <laughs> Good work. Good work. Yeah, yeah. I used to do, uh, me and my brother used to do competition motocross when we, when we were kids. Did you? Yeah, privileged upbringing, <laughs> Bruce. Yeah. Um, Where'd you do yeah, that up so there we, then? I don't, I don't remember any of that growing uh, up. Ah, well, my old man had uh, had a heavy er uh, an earthworks business. Mm -hmm. So he had all of the big caterpillar excavators, bulldozers. So he just went and built one. <laughs> Is this over on Elgin? Elgin way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah. right. So the, the motocross track was still, that motocross track that he cut the ground on, I think it's uh, near South Lismerdy uh, in Elgin. That's still there. That's been used quite a lot now. Um, but prior to that, um my old man uh, got the use of a field, but just a, just a, it couldn't be farmed. This was because the terrain was so was so awful, mm. you know. Um, and he knew the guy that had the land, and so um, he uh, he got the low loader along with uh, with a caterpillar, a D D six or whatever, and uh, started carving out the landscape. And then um, and then we had uh, I think the guy's name was Vic Allen. Who was the Scottish motocross champion at the time? Right. Come up on his CCM to uh, to test the track out for us to give us the <laughs> give me the thumbs up. Clear, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. So yeah, it was an XR seventy five Honda, um, little little scrambler. Nice, seven years old. So I didn't I didn't get into bikes till much much later in life. I was thirty two when I started riding. So for me, it was driving, and I remember. Oh, my best mate at the type time, Roy, his dad, his dad used to work in the oil, but he, he was out in Libya. But when he was home, he'd take us swimming. And on the way back uh, out of Peterhead, we used to stop over at the, the old abandoned Second World War uh, airfields that they had, sort of between Peterhead yeah. and Longside. And you, yeah. could, you could just drive onto them. You know, you could just drive on and do whatever you liked. Yep. So um, he, yep. he, we used to get there and we'd sit in his lap and he'd work the pedals and we'd work the uh, the steering wheel. He had an old, I don't know what it was. It wasn't a Morris Minor, but it was a an old, old car. So that's that's the first time I drove. And then the first right. car I owned was a hand-me-down from my brother. 
I got his clapped out old B Reg one litre escort, which did about 35 <sighs> mile an hour top speed. It was absolutely shacked. <laughs> So that was my first yeah. car. <laughs> but they would go anywhere, so... Well, th- this one didn't. <laughs> You're okay, lucky if it yeah. went anywhere at all. <laughs> 35, 35 mile an hour yeah. out of a, oh, a, an Escort. It was absolutely shagged. I remember um, I had that car when when I was with my son's mother. And after my boy was born, we we drove from the house that we had in Glasgow up to my mum and dad's up in Mintlaw. And I remember... Near Dundee, there's quite a big steep hill that you have to go up on the motorway. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And the yeah. car didn't make yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> had to keep stopping. <laughs> it just it just kept dying. So I just have to start and you know feather the clutch in, in first gear and try and get it up a little bit more and then stop and let it cool and then go again. It was absolutely right, done, that car. Someone nicked it in the end. <laughs> Did you a favour? I'm surprised they managed to get it anywhere. Must have broke down at the bottom of the road. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, they're probably probably cursing you as I well. Know, as yeah, yeah. Do you want it back? Speed <laughs> off, speeding <laughs> off at 35 miles an hour. What a fell of shit. Nice one, David. Cheers for that question. Yeah. Next one, Ben cool. Farmer. Slange to you both. Slange, Ben. Slange. Slange. So we yeah. all know there's a price point at which you're paying for weight loss beyond the quality of a lid by use of more exotic materials. But is there a similar point for the best structural integrity of the various types of helmet? Basically, what's the Oof. safest lid for the money at, say, 150 350 or £550, pounds, for example? Is there a sweet spot oh. for you to say? Um, again, it would just be my opinion here, So because I'm not the, you know, the... The, uh, I'm not the composite test, testing um, expert here, but um, I have read, I've read a lot about this, and it just seems to all be opinions. Mm. You know, it just doesn't seem to be any. I mean, that's fine. It's fine to have an opinion about something, but um, quite a lot of the articles that I see or read about this, they reckon if you're spending more than two hundred quid on a helmet. You're, you, all you're paying for is brand, comfort, aesthetics, mm. um, weight, all of those. Um, well, no, because you still get composite helmets that are um, 200 quid. I suppose, yeah, the LS2 do a carbon fibre one, don't they? And that's, I think that's only 130 quid, 140 quid. Doesn't, doesn't like even that. need, well, I mean, carbon fibres... Um, Super light, of course, mm. and super strong. But um, G- GRP, glass reinforced plastics, a composite, fiberglass to you mm. and me. Um, you know, and that's what that's what the, the a lot of the premium range helmets will be made of if they're not made of um, carbon fibre. Mm. So you can get into into a really good two hundred quid helmet. Um, maybe it just doesn't have the paint job that you're looking for. Maybe it doesn't, you know. It's, now, like I, I know, I know what we're saying here about there, there's there is a there is a safety standard that helmets must meet. So, yeah, once they've hit that that standard, they're safe. But there must be helmets out there who far exceed that standard, and other ones that yeah. just just peak it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, yeah. I suppose that that doesn't come in. That doesn't come into your remit, does it? In the helmet inspection company, you're not. No, because that's that's all that's all destructive testing yeah. before you can find out. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can find out what how the helmet performs mm-hmm. in real life. Gotcha. Um, well, so I would say real life, but I don't even think that those tests reflect real life. Mm. I mean, they're they're good, but yeah, right. Uh, so basically, Ben, that's that's not something that either of us have the required ex- expertise to, to give you a, a valued answer on that. It would just be our personal opinion, really. And it's yeah, anyone yeah. can have that. Um, ben also says, PS, looking forward to the clan meetup in a few weeks' time. Definitely, <coughs> mate. Yes. We, um, on my Patreon, everyone that's in it is known as the clan and we have these meetups. So we've got one in a couple of weeks down, uh, down in Devon. So looking forward to that as well, Ben. Get you a beer, pal. Next one, Ooh. Chris Jones, Tall Boy Rides. Evening all. Hope you're all well. All good, Chris. Cheers. Evening, Chris. In your opinion, which motorcycle has been the biggest letdown and just didn't live up to the hype? <laughs> I've got an answer to this Go one. Go on. 
it's not a modern it's not a modern motorcycle right um and uh it would have to be it would have to be the Honda CB250 Super Dream okay there was nothing super about that bike <laughs> nothing Absolutely dreamy either. nothing nothing dreamy <laughs> no no it was it was it was i mean i'd go onto the website check out the, the bios go onto our website check out the bios and click on my bio and i even i even I even mention it there there's a picture of it <laughs> right just yeah i mean when we were the, when we had the bike shop massively selling you know that bike sold um it was probably one of the most popular bikes to sell that year it came out but it's just a bag of shit it's, un, it's, it's unlike honda to, to do to make that mistake as well, well what was it about it then that you didn't like everything uh every, brakes looks well actually the looks were okay brakes uh uh handling uh suspension uh, uh yeah, only it's a just few things. Eh? I wasn't even old enough to ride it on the, on the road, but that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> I think for me, um, again, we chatted about this on a podcast. It's very rare these days that you get a bad modern bike, and yeah. even even this one I'm going to mention, it's not a bad bike, but it was a big letdown for me, and that is the Sinus T380 purely because I'd had such a laugh on the Terrain 125, the 125 version of it. So when they launched the 380cc version of it, I thought, oh God, this this could almost be like a, a perfect Joe Bloggs bike. And then I got on it and it just felt like a woefully underpowered non-event. I was gutted because I was really expecting big things from it. What was it? A Sinus, Sin- did you say? Sinus T380. Yeah, terrain. I've never too. even heard. Never even mind you. I've had my head stuck in the sand for the last two years. So it's a, uh, a, a fairly a fairly young um, British distributor of a Chinese manufactured bike. Um, it, it gets known as a variety of different names in different countries around the world, but in the UK they're known as Sinus, uh, and it's it's a one two five cc bike called the Terrain. Well, then they okay. launched the 380cc version of it, and um, yeah, it's just, yeah. it just didn't, it just didn't do it. What did, uh, so what did you not like about it? It was really underpowered, and I think, I mean, the 125, even as a 125cc, it's down on power compared to a lot of other 125s out there. But it was fun, okay. you know. I just, I just because it's underpowered, you're pinned the whole time. Yeah. Just the whole, whether you're going through a town, whether you're heading out for a dual carriageway, you just pinned. You just pinned, waiting for something to happen. And it was just fun. Oh. It was just I, I I I did a road trip on it. I had a, a scream. Did like a thousand miles on this little one two five. In fact, oh my goodness! I, I, I just I took one around the UK. I did two and a half thousand miles on it. Um, a couple of months. No, oh, when was it? Last, Are you ever at home, Bruce? I am nowadays, yeah. Hardly get out on the bike nowadays. Um, mm. But yeah, you know, I, I put some big miles on the 125 and then when this 380 yeah. was launched, I thought, yes, it's just going to have that little bit extra oomph. And it didn't. Yeah. <laughs> it just, it just didn't. <laughs> nothing, nothing more from yeah. still had the pins. Yeah, it you? just, I mean, okay, it, it went maybe 75, 80 miles an hour on the motorway if you're going downhill with a, with a, a back wind. Ooh. Whereas the 125, I think the 125 would... You'd maybe get 65, possibly 70 if you were going down a vertical drop. You know what I mean? But but yeah. it'd take ages to get there. Well, the jump from 125 to 380 cc, it's, it's big in terms of cc, but there was just yeah. hardly any jump at all in performance, and right. it just seemed it just seemed to lose its character. Which I was, what was the build? What was the build quality like on it? Um, I mean, they're cheap bikes. They are cheap bikes, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. it's not fantastic, but it's not cheese. Um, one thing with the Chinese mm-hmm. bikes is they don't last very long if you leave them outside and you don't look after them. You know, they they will rust very quickly if you don't keep on top of that. So you need you need yeah. to be WD forty and you need to be ACF fifty and you you need to you know um, get the thing ceramic coated mm. if you want to go that far. You need to keep it clean. You got to keep really on top of of the parts. But it's mm. like the one two five is what was it two and a half grand three grand? 
So it's, yeah. it's not a massive outlay, you know, for, yeah. for the you one can to see, five. You can, see, you, you can see the appeal for someone who's maybe just, you know, commuting around a city. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, they're not going to need to have it at 60, 70 miles an hour. No. <clears throat> and I've had quite a lot of people contact me who've watched my vids on the 125 and said, I've gone and bought one and I love it. I absolutely love it. And that's that's great wow. to hear, you know, that yeah, that's good, they've yeah. spent their money on it and they actually really enjoy the bike. So that's that's good. That's good to know. Yeah. Uh, okay, right. Next one. Cheers for that, Chris. Next one. Pete Morris. Hello. It's said that you either have an Arai head or a Shoei head due to the shape of the helmet <laughs> shell. Is that a load of cods, yeah. Wallop? Also, as fitment is so, also as fitment is so important, should helmets be sold mail order? What's your take on this then, the Arai and Shoei debate? <clears throat> um, I. You mentioned I I've had I, I've had Arais and I've had Shoeis mm. and. And did your head fit both? Uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe I've just got a universal head. Yeah, see, I remember trying RI on and trying Shoei on, that first ever helmet, because even the yeah, guy in the yeah. shop said to me, he said, you know, these are the two main makes and you'll either be one or the yeah. other. That, yeah. that was his exact words. And RI yeah. didn't fit, Shoei fit, fit really well. So I've just been Shoei yeah. ever since. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, that the, the whole fit thing is, uh, well, it's, it's massively important. Mm. Um but yeah, I hear I hear it all the time. You know, you've either got a showy head or an RI head. Mm. Um, I mean, how do other companies overcome that? Well, you know, if you, I don't ever hear anyone saying, oh, "I've got an HGC head." It, well, it's interesting because I I have heard that from people. Um, have you? Yeah, yeah I've, <laughs> I've heard that from people saying that other manufacturers' lids fit them way better than like any other ones that they've tried. I actually did a vid. Right. I did a vid with Sports Bike Shop on picking. Uh, picking my ideal helmet. So they, they gave me five of the leading adventure style helmets, five different brands. Yeah. And I tried yeah. on them all. And, you know, even though Shoei has always been my lid, Shoei still fit me the best out of all of them. I tried an RI on, I tried Nex, I tried AGV, I tried, uh, oh God, Climb. I tried, was that okay, yeah. Yeah, I tried loads of different ones. And yeah, yeah Shoei still fit me the best out of all of them. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, that just shows you it's how how important it is to actually go and try them on, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Which I guess leads into the second part of the order. Um, yeah. I think um, I think if you know if you know what helmet fits, then what's the problem with buying that lid? Like I know. I know any shoey fits me and I know what size of a shoey fits me. Yeah. So yeah. I would have no issue with me just going online and buying one mail order. Mm -hmm. But then I think, I think you're a bit of a fool if you're going potluck and you're going, I like the look of that lid, but I've never ever tried it on. I think that's, that's only going to end one way that, <laughs> you know, you're far better to go well, into a shop and get fitted for it properly. I would agree hundred percent. Um, I think, well, you mentioned sports bike shop mm -hmm. there. They they do a sale or return, do, yeah. as I'm sure, mm -hmm. as I'm sure a, a lot of the online retailers yeah. do. And they and uh, I know the guys at sports bike shop, and they've they're really proud of the uh, security box system that they've designed and had manufactured specially for sale or return. Yeah. So. Um, they, they've put in a lot of effort into getting that right. The bit that I struggle with, I think, in this uh, online helmet retailer space is, or uh, uh, you know, I probably you know you, you you might think that this has just been overly sensitive about things, but what happens if somebody's taken a helmet on a sale or return basis? You don't know what they've done with that mm. helmet, and again, we've talked about the fact that if there is damage inside a helmet, it could be, it could have just been pressed upon really tightly, mm. put inside a, inside the boot of a car or whatever with a load of bags on top of it. The, the Chopsy's helmet, that's probably what happened to his. Um, and then they say, ah, they decide the customer then decides, well, actually, I, I don't like the helmet, put it back in, seal up the box, send it back. Mm. And that helmet presumably just goes back into stock. Somebody spends a good hard-on money on it. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's yeah. interesting. That's I don't. That's that's the part that troubles me quite a bit, actually. About um, well, maybe maybe there's an inner commercially for the helmet inspection company. <laughs> possibly. I just, I, yeah, possibly, Bruce. Um, for somebody like the sports bike shop to say, you know, for for their that, that's a process that they undertake for you know returned helmets is they're professionally inspected. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it's another guarantee. It would certainly be a, it would it would certainly be a USP mm, for them, wouldn't definitely. it? Definitely, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll only take a half a percent commission on that. Don't worry. Uh, that's good. <laughs> I'll see you all right when I get my new glasses. Uh, nice one, uh, Pete. Good question, pal. Uh, next yeah, one, Chris yeah. Kemp. Hi, guys. Hope you're both well. What's your favourite motorcycle film and what's your favourite film bike? Cool. Oh, favourite motorcycle film. I had this question fairly recently. Mm. And the first thing that came to mind was uh, Easy Rider, but I haven't seen it. And I said then, I've got to go and watch it, but I've still not watched it yet. I uh, I always find that a lot of the motorcycle films are not, not of a sort of genre that uh, I can relate to. Hmm. They're usually uh, easy rider choppers and, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I... I can't, I'm a sports bike rider, you know, yeah. and, I, and uh, I don't, I don't get any of that stuff really. I mean, it's not, to, it's not to say that it's, uh, so I, so I, I don't really have, I don't really, I can't really think of there, any films. There's two, I can't think of one bike. Well, there's two films that spring to me, spring to mind straight away for me. Yeah. Uh, obviously yeah. TT closer to the edge, but one yeah. I think probably picks that is Road. Have you seen Road about the Dunlop dynasty? No. You've not seen Road? Oh. No. Watch, watch Road, but watch it by yourself, because I was bawling my eyes out. What, yeah, yeah. Oh, really? It's brilliant. It's all about the Dunlop family dynasty. Um, and it was, it came out in 2014? Yeah. Yeah, it came out, because I, I was at the premiere for it, actually, at the TT. I was over at the Isle of Man, Um and and they did the premiere of it in the in the uh, cinema there, so I've just turned yeah. up and watched it. Awesome, really, really good. Well worth seeing. Go on, and what's your favourite uh, film bike? Um, it's the uh, it's so here's where I'm going to contradict myself with choppers, right? right? <laughs> choppers helmet inspection company. God, what all the innuendo is fairly <laughs> flying about here. Um. It's the uh, it's the chopper on um, Pulp Fiction. Oh yeah, said 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 spike said dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, I just thought it was a really good, just you know of all the bikes that they could have picked, they just picked a pretty cool bike to do that on. Most people that was good. most people pick like the Batman bike or the Tron bike and all this sort of stuff. I've never heard anyone say that Zed's bike. Oh, right. cool, cool. Yeah, pardon me. Right, last one of the patron. Uh, this is Simon Lewis. Hi, gents. Hi, Simon. So all my produce, oh, yeah, all my produce down the veg aisle has a sell-by date. Uh -huh. What's the sell-by date on a helmet? When is it no longer safe to wear? What's the most interesting thing you've discovered from testing? Well, we kind of touched on that earlier, didn't we, about sell-bys on, on a helmet? Mm, it, yeah, you said you were going to cover that later on. Well, now's as good a time as any. Is there like a, is there a definitive time, or does it depend on manufacturer to manufacturer or material to material? It's just a complete lottery, Bruce. It's um, right. so this is why. So what happens is the then let's so let's assume that we're talking about composite materials. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what happens when you're when you're making the the, the makeup of that composite material is that there's glues and resins between the layers and so on. Yeah. And what what happens is over time, gradually they become brittle and they and they just don't perform to the same same standard. And so that's why uh, a helmet manufacturer will say to you, anything between three to five years, then it's it's past its service life. Right. So replace it. And that's fact. That's just a that's a technical fact. It's a helmet is a consumable item. The helmet producers 
you know, they they will know exactly what what materials their composites are made up from, and they'll know what the um, service life is for those composites. Right. So that's why they they say three to five years. Now that seems like quite a, a sort of vague, mm. uh, you know. Well, what is it? Three years? Is it four years? Yeah. Is it five years? Um, it's this. This is just a, a you know a low risk message from from a, a helmet producer. Right. You know they're taking the safe ground, but they're not. They're not saying that because they want you in to to get a new helmet or, or re- replace a helmet every three to five years. It's a genuine message. Mm. You, the, the the materials degrade over time. Okay. That degradation speeds up um, if you're out in direct sunlight a lot. Really. This, uh, U, UV ultraviolet will break down the the materials over time. So yeah. if, if you use your lid every day, it could reduce the living, uh, the viable working life of your lid. Then so, the service life. Yeah. Bloody hell! Yeah. I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah, because yeah. I used to I used to ride every single day, but obviously mm-hmm. not not so much now. But yeah. Oh God, I didn't know that. So yeah. excuse to buy a new you, lid. You, isn't it? it is. Yeah. Yeah. But then you know. Um, as I said earlier on, the the environment that you expose that helmet to, whether you know it or not, you know, put your put your lid up on the shelf in the garage over the winter time. Someone's come in. Uh, one of the kids has come in, knocked it down, oh, knocked off Dad's helmet. Let's put it back on the shelf. Yeah, yeah. you got no idea. Oh, you got yeah. no idea. You know. So so yeah. Um, Simon's got a second question. What's the most interesting thing you've discovered from testing? Take that as you will, but. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, well, clear. I think the, 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 lead, the headline here is that, uh, you know, the damage is, if there's damage that exists, I've been really, I've, I've always been surprised when I look at a helmet. And it looks absolutely pristine. Put it under the test rig, and, it's and then you see it, it's shagged. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just I think, and I think Chopsy uh, was was equally surprised by that one as well. Yeah. Um, Does that so, happen? Yeah, a lot? That would be... Do you get that a lot then? Um. Yeah, I think. Well, surprisingly, it's quite often. Yeah. Wow. Because I'd have thought. Well, look at. Sorry, I'd, I'd have thought. As a customer, as a punter, I would have thought you would only send your lid to be tested if you thought, oh, you know, oops, this is I've just dropped this, or mm, I've had this a while. Well, we're do- well, we're doing blind testing, right? Ah, right. So, so we we've got no information, or very rarely do we actually get any information from the customer ah. about the circumstances of well. I dropped it from 1.5 meters. It was a it was a solid uh, concrete surface. There was nothing in the helmet. You know, uh, we we don't get any of that oh, so data. You just get the lid so, and you do a test, yeah. and then that's yeah. fed back, and then yeah, that's passed to the, the punter. That's right. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh, okay. <clears throat> God, I didn't yeah. know that. Right. In fact, we had, we had one customer who uh, I don't know. I don't know what he thought. Um, what he thought we were going to find he, he knew he knew that he had dropped his helmet yeah. right uh, but there was no visible evidence of any of a drop to it at all beautiful beautiful lid and he sent that to us and uh, I had a chat with him uh, I had some reason to call him up and we got chatting away and uh, it, it failed it failed there was there was, uh, there was significant damage to it um, safety critical damage to it and uh, he he then said, "Well, actually, yeah, I dropped that helmet, um, but I didn't want to say anything. I've never I've never fessed up to any of my mates or anything like that." Yeah. Um, but yeah, he he. So I think he was quite happy that uh, we had found the damage, and it sort of you know confirmed in his own mind that uh, sending it to us was the right thing to do. Yeah, got you, got you. Right, uh, are you okay for time just now? That's two hours we've been on. Can I take a comfort break? Of course you can, feel free. Whilst you're away, Magic. I will run through some sponsor readouts then. That's perfect timing. Cool, okay. See you in a bit. <laughs> right then, folks, uh, I should have done these earlier. 
However, yeah. as you know, the podcast is sponsored. I need the sponsorship. It helps pay the bills, to be to be blunt. Uh, right. First off is Inov. Now, Inov also sponsor the main Teapot One channel, the YouTube channel. Now, Inov, um, they, have, they don't really give me any set blurb to, to, to read out here. It's just from my experience of them. Inov produce... Um, motorcycle dash cams so they've got the single c5 system which is just one camera you can either have that mounted on the bike or you can have it mounted on your helmet if you wanted uh, and they also do the dual camera systems the k series they've got the k3 and the k5 their front and rear camera systems the k5's flagship it's got a 4k front camera then the 1080 rear k2 is 1080 front and rear both of the K2, uh, K3, sorry, and the K5, both of them have, excuse me, just drop me, uh, me your bud. Both of them have a GPS uh, recording on it, so it will map where you've been. They've both got uh, uh, an external remote on it, a wired remote, which you put somewhere up on the front of your bike. That gives you a visual, visual representation that the system's working, the cameras are recording, and there's also a big button on there that you can use to either excuse me, take pictures as you're going. Say you see something you like the look of, you can whack, tap the button, take a picture, or alternatively, if there's anything that happens during your ride that you think, I, I, want, to, I want to save that video, whether it's an accident or might even just be a nice bit of scenery, something that you've seen, well, you can also push this button and it will automatically lock that segment of video. Speaking of which, you can record in one minute, three minute, five minute, 15 minute segments, and it just loop records all the time, like a normal standard dash cam system. It's a brilliant bit of kit, folks. It's totally autonomous. Once you fit, you totally forget about it. It switches on as soon as you turn the ignition on. It's also got a parking mode on it so that, uh, you know, say you park your bike up at the calf, you go off, have a cup of tea, cup of coffee. Well, whilst you're away, if anyone nudges your bike or say they reverse into it or something like that, the system automatically will kick in and it will log anything that's happened whilst the bike's been parked. So hopefully you'll capture the, the culprit, whoever's damaged your bike. Um, if you get involved in any sort of incident, the first thing the insurance people will ask is, is there CCTV? I've had this myself a couple of times now. And if you've got the in-off fitted, you can turn around and go, yes. And often that will be the difference between a 50-50 claim and a claim 100% in your favour. Head to inov, I-N-N-O-V-V dot co dot UK, but I'll ask you if you can use the the affiliate link, which is in the show notes. So if you're listening to the podcast, check out the show notes. If you're watching the podcast, look at the YouTube vid description. I'll leave a link there. That helps me massively because it lets Inov know that you've come from me. And if you use the code TEAPOT, then you'll get 5% off of any camera system, which they do. We're also sponsored by the Influencer Store. I'll be with you in two ticks. Sorry about that, Martin. We're also sponsored by the Influencer Store. And the Influencer Store helps you build your brand, big or small, providing you with a solution and apparel. We help you to increase your fan base while supporting you with starting your own Influencer clothing line with nothing more than just an idea or design. And there are no hidden costs. For more info, come check them out at the influencerstore.co.uk or drop them an email at online at influencerstore.co.uk for more information and the influencer store are the people who handle all my merch over at teapot one so right martin you're back right i am, I am. let's pop over to let me move this out the way if we head over now to instagram so that's just instagram.com uh, or well, at teapot one insta is my uh, tag first one we got here paul hughes 4108 other than an extra dose of road rash and the look of distaste from sports bikes, full-faced helmet wearers, what, if any, are the danger or disadvantages of a modular helmet in a collision? Also, why do people stop at the top of escalators? <laughs> well, the first part of this, we chatted about this, didn't we? It's not... That's, is that something that you, you sort of cater Again, for? It's just a personal. it's just a personal opinion that I've got. You've got the more... Uh, uh, apertures and cuts and vents and things like that you've got in a in a shell. Mm -hmm. uh, the less the less um, structural strength it's got. Okay. And so a modular modular helmet by that um, 
definition. Can't speak now. I've had definition. I've had uh, you're a bad influence there, Bruce. I've, been, I've had too many brew dogs. Yes, by that definition, it would stands the reason that a modular helmet is less uh, structural or not as structurally sound as a full face helmet. Mm-hmm. But as you said, they've all passed that minimum safety standard, haven't they? So yeah, yeah. Yep. But yep. it isn't yep. as strong as a as a full face lid. Correct. And the same the same stand the same goes for um you know the helmets with an integral visor. Yeah. You know, it's uh it's not as structurally safe I suppose as because there's a void at the front, isn't there? Well, to an extent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Uh his second part of his question, why do people stop at the top of escalators? <laughs> why do people stop at the top of escalators? Have you tried walking? I don't know. Have you tried walking Try straight off an escalator at the top? Well, airports, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like this mass queue. People go off the, the end of an escalator, right? And they're going, well, oh, I wonder where I'm supposed to go now, yeah. you know? And yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, well, wherever it is, get it's out of the just way. supposed to yeah, just no. get going that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know, yeah. I was thinking, I, I took it totally the wrong way. I was thinking, you're still on the escalator, but you've reached the top and you're just waiting to step off. You know, a lot of people just uh-huh. stop, don't they? Because if you don't, you can you can almost like run off the end of it, can't you? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's that's a that's a who who was that? Was that Paul question? Hughes four one zero eight. Paul Hughes four one zero eight. That's an excellent question. Next one. Oh, it's not a question, but it's just Viscount <laughs> Pasty saying I'll be listening, Bruce. Cheers, Danny. I was uh, I was on a trip round Wales with Danny actually at the weekend there. We we camped Saturday night and the tents froze. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, right. Yeah. Uh, right, next one. Alan underscore B underscore one. It takes me a lot of effort to get my other half to inspect my helmet. Have you got any tips on how I can encourage her to pay it more attention? <laughs> no, but when you find the answer, yeah, let can us you let know. me know as well? Yeah, yeah let us all know. Uh, Bruce, don't marry her. <laughs> Oh, jeez. He said that, not me. <laughs> um, Bruce, any updates on your custom-designed helmet? It seems like ages since you last mentioned it. Uh, well, actually, we've uh, we've chatted about that. Yeah, I've got yeah. no updates. I'm not sure. I've got no idea if it's still happening. I, I, I don't know. Um, I don't feel like it's my place to to chase up Phil because he's doing it out of the kindness of, of his heart. So he's got a business to run, and I'll, I'll just wait my time. Just wait. Uh, next one, Airhead Rick. I'd like to get Martin's opinion on the useful life of helmets. Most manufacturers suggest, well, we've covered this, haven't we? Most manufacturers suggest replacement every five years. Is there any science behind this or is it pure marketing? This has implications for every rider, but for areas where, where, season, is on, where season is only six months, you get limited life from an expensive lid. Thanks, Bruce, mm. and keep up the good work with the channel and podcast. Yeah, we've chatted about mm. that, haven't we? Haven't we? It's, mm-hmm. um, yep. Yep. it's to do with the I mean, actual... The the the, uh, the material man the, the manufacturing of the materials yeah yeah it's the materials that's used it, that it, are used it just breaks down over time anyway so yeah. that's hence why they yeah. say every three to five years so yeah. yeah I mean we can you know that's why that's why uh, we get people sending us their favourite lids you know they might have a a, a helmet that's got a particular colour scheme mm. on it that's discontinued and yeah. You know they they want to keep keep using it, so um, you know they they said they reckon that forty quid's forty quid's not going to be much. Two seconds, I dropped I dropped one of my earpods on the floor, and the dogs just come in, <laughs> <laughs> swallowed. <laughs> she was, she was. <laughs> You're going to have to recover that out in the, the garden tomorrow, weren't you? Tomorrow, yeah, in a bag, yeah. <laughs> I'll whack that back in. Um, yeah, but then I, again, I suppose that's the beauty of the service that you provide, really, isn't it? If you've, say, you've yeah. just spent 300, 350 quid on a lid and it's now, say, three years old, well, for the sake of £40, you can send that to Marty yeah. to helmet inspection and they can, you know, test it out and say, yeah. well, okay, you know, that's still fine. So you get another year out yeah. of it, another two years, whatever. It's up to yeah. you. Yeah. That's the other thing as well, uh, Bruce. You know, the, I think that the the cost of helmets. Um, if somebody's dropped a helmet and it's an expensive helmet, well, let's face it, a lot of the helmets that people are running around in are, are expensive mm-hmm. helmets. You know, um, I think a lot of people are just thinking, well, I'll just 
it'll be fine. Yeah. You know, rather than rather than having to go through the expense again, mm. maybe, maybe you know, maybe things aren't maybe things are tight budget wise or whatever. You know, and you go, oh, I'll just I'll just chance it. You know. Mm. So what we're doing is we're giving people an opportunity just to go well. Um, here's the information that you need to make your own judgment call, but at least you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're you're, um, you're arming people with the the required information, aren't you? So they can make an educated decision rather than gambling, ultimately, yeah, which is absolutely. what which is what we do, isn't it? As you said, when you yeah. drop the lid, you you take the gamble. It'll be fine. Uh, cheers for that, Airhead Rick. Next one, Lord underscore Billius. What does Martin think of the official Sharp testing results? Do they test real world impacts or just what they think impacts are likely to be? Um, that's a difficult one because um, I've got a lot of respect and admiration for what Sharp do. Um, I think that they've. Um, They've given us as a consumer a lot of information and a lot more confidence in the purchase the purchases that we make yeah. um, as bikers. And uh, you know, I can't take that away from them. It's a brilliant service and it's free. You know, they don't it's a government funded yeah. um, service, fully independent. Um, yeah, they they do they do. They do have a number of different tests, and they do de- they do test on different scenarios, um, oblique testing and uh, other sort of forms of impact testing. Uh, I think, to be fair to Sharp, it's going to be difficult for them to replicate every possible mm-hmm. type of test. Yeah. But you know, when have you ever seen? Well, look at Marquez for a start. When have you ever seen him? Well, actually, all the time. <laughs> yeah, he does do it quite frequently, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I think it's that's that's a really difficult one. Mm. Um, um, yeah. No, sorry. It's... But I think I think I, I think these safety tests they just you you have to have. You have to have a base standard, don't you? Across the board, yeah. you, you have to, because yeah. otherwise, you know, other, otherwise you'd get some of this cheap, blooming, like Indian and, and Chinese manufactured rubbish that seems to make its way into some of the bike shows. Well, London shows a prime example. You know, there was a load of mm-hmm. stuff there that got confiscated, didn't it? Because it just didn't meet any of the safety standards. Yeah, yeah, that was the local authorities' trading standards yes. went in there and yeah. shut down a few stands, didn't they? Which is kind of, you know, that that is, that's disgusting that at a high-level show like that, that wasn't mm. taken into account when they, you know, when, when they selected vendors to have there, surely that must, I would have thought that would be one of the first requirements, is, is this kept fit for purpose? But obviously, mm. they weren't checking that at the time. But um, mm. yeah, the, the fact that we have these, you know, the sharp test, and you've got the 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 e. Sorry, what is it? The EC two two ECE twenty two or six. That one. So we've got this. Base, it rolls off the tongue. It does, doesn't it? We've got this base level of of safety yeah. standard, which we know that if if a helmet has that accreditation on it, we know it's reached that bare minimum standard. And as we said, mm-hmm. some helmets will be far exceeding that. But even yeah. even the most basic ones have passed that level, and and I think that is very important. That that's hugely important for us as a consumer, isn't it? Because at least you know you're mm-hmm. buying a product which does the job. It's yes, yeah, it's, yeah. it's going to do the job. <clears throat> yeah, and standards evolve as well, mm-hmm. don't they? You know, so we, you know, I mentioned before we're getting to 20, ECE twenty two oh six that's um, that's come out now. Oh, my favourite. You know. <laughs> Oh, I tell you, Bruce. You know, I, you 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 probably pay for a Netflix subscription. I don't. I just download all these standards and sit and read, read them. them. Ooh. Read them. Read them to my kids. It's bedtime <laughs> stories. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, good question, though, Lord Billius. Cheers for that. Yeah, yeah. Next one, Carp and Matt. This looks like it will be yet another fantastic episode. Cheers, Matt. My question to you both is, there are 16 million kangaroos... In, I'll see where this is going. 16 million kangaroos in Australia, and there are 3.4 million people in Uruguay. This... Cool. Right, concentrate, Martin. I'm this trying. means that if the kangaroos decide to invade... 
then every person will need to face 4.7 kangaroos. Matt's done some research here. What advice would you give them to try and help beat the evil kangaroos? Wow. Wow. You've got you've got some tough questions coming out from your your followers, haven't you? I think Matt um, I think Matt's been drinking more than uh, Brewdog. That's a good question. Hmm. Okay. So, so just just read the last part to me again. What would you do to what advice would you give them to try and help beat the evil kangaroos? So every every single person in Uruguay has to face four point seven kangaroos if the Aussie kangaroos decide to invade Uruguay. Yeah. So what would be Can your you advice? Just eat, eat them. What four point seven? Well, I'll stick stick them in the freezer. <laughs> Now I've been to Oz, and yeah. not all kangaroos yeah. are these great big massive steroid freaks that you see occasionally. Some yeah. are yeah. bloody yeah. massive, but not all of yeah. them are. So I would say try and pick off the small ones first, <laughs> and then for the big ones, Is, was 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 that your philosophy when you were a copper? <laughs> No, I used to go for the big ones first. <laughs> All right, okay. okay. Take the big ones out. Um, <clears throat> God, yeah. Uh, Jeez. I'd, I mean, I'm lost for words. I'd be, I tell you what, if the kangaroos come over here, I'd be stuffed. What? I wouldn't, know what, to, I wouldn't know what to do. They'd freeze. Well, that's true, yeah. It would yeah. be fine. The kangaroos yeah, have only yeah. got wee arms. It's the feet you need to worry about, isn't it? It's the legs. Yeah, so well, partly so, yeah. So, like, no, it wouldn't help if you got up close and personal with a kangaroo, would it? Because they could they could still kick you. I think if they kick you, yeah. you're buggered. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I think if they were to get you into a, a bit of a, a a wrestle lock as well, I think you'd be, what? you wouldn't come out of that. You wouldn't come out of that too too good, would you? They've only got wee arms. So what if you could come to some sort of agreement whereby you could arm wrestle, you could decide the fate of Uruguay on the arm wrestling. In which case, just get just get your monster to arm wrestle all the kangaroos. Or I could just shoot all the fuckers. Or just shoot, shoot them. Yeah, we didn't think about yeah. this, did we? Shoot some shoot the kangaroos. It's just the simplest. <laughs> just shoot them. Yeah. Yeah, don't arm wrestle them. Don't get into no, some. No, don't MMA arm wrestle fight. them. Just shoot them. Just shoot them. Yeah. And then stick them in the freezer. I need them. That's, that's Christmas dinner sorted out Chop for them. the next a long time. 10 years. Uh, right. Last question Bike throttle. Ask him if he's seen a Voz and what he thinks of them. What's a Voz? Oh, I, I know what a Voz is. Yeah. What's that? <laughs> oh, it's, a mo- it's a modular helmet, right? But it's not the sort of modular flip up. It's where the back opens up like that. Oh, I've seen them. Yeah, you put it's, it on you know, and like, it comes over the top. Yeah. Oh god. Over the like over the back, yeah. right? Uh it's supposed to be uh I, I mean I, I don't I've never seen I've I've seen pictures of them, but I've never seen one come through the lab. Yeah. Um, I don't know anyone that's ever worn one, to my knowledge, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I've, well, what do we think about them? Um, again, it comes down to personal opinion, doesn't it? Mm. Load of bollocks. Would I buy one? Would, <laughs> would, I, would, I, would I, if, even if I was given one for free, would I wear it? No. No. <laughs> no. I just don't think so, no. I don't, I, mm. I mean, I, I kind of think, I kind of, in my head, I'm thinking, no, that's that's just a very close-minded approach, of course. In the interest of of consumer research, of course you would wear it. Of course you'd try it. I don't know if I would. <laughs> I just think, we, I don't know anyone that would ever wear one. And I certainly, just looking at them, I'm like, that's not a lid that I would wear. So what's the point in testing it? But I suppose somebody has to test it, don't they? So who was the, who was the question from? Uh, bike throttle. Bike throttle. So I'm guessing bike throttle is has uh, got got his or her eye on one. No, um, Sean Sean is an ex uh, motorcycle journalist. In fact, he still right, is. Okay. I think. Yeah, I think he still is. Um, yeah, he's been on the podcast. 
But um, yeah, okay. Seen a Voz. I I a I, could, I didn't remember that they were called Voz, Sean. But I, as soon as Martin started talking about it, I was like, oh, I remember seeing. I've seen some pictures and vids of these things. Yeah. Why me? Yeah. Yeah. Right, dude. Um, that is us. We are mm. through all the questions. It's not bad, is it? Well, Nearly two and a half hours. Cheaper, yeah. That's t- I tell you what, that's um, time's flown by. Maybe it's the brew dogs. It's it's nuts, but isn't it? It does fly by. I've only had th- I've only had three. I'm, I'm the same. <clears throat> yeah, I'm on my third as well. Wow. Um, yeah, because because when you, you know when I was looking at the the times that you've the durations yeah. you've done for these podcasts in the past, I thought, God, we'll be getting for like fifteen minutes into this podcast, so, and you know. I'll have nothing to say. <laughs> Everyone's the same. You know, everyone goes to me, how long do these things go on for? And I'm like, well, they range from an hour to like three hours plus. And they're like, yeah. what the heck yeah. do you talk for, about for an hour? And I'm like, well, generally speaking, they go at least two hours normally, if not more. Yeah. And um, yeah. I was like, you'd be surprised. It just, you know, especially with the questions. Yeah. The questions, I think, are what what makes the, this podcast is is the, the questions that pose by people. Caught me out Makes a few think. of those questions. I have to say, yeah, yeah, the kangaroo one definitely. <laughs> I, I'm still, yeah. I'm st- the whole podcast. I've been thinking about that question about the best hundred quid that I spent. Yeah, and I can't yeah. think of a legal yeah. answer no. that I can say. No. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the same boat here. Yeah, best not talk about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I do, but I, no, okay, anyway, I'm right. A- anything I say, anything I say is just going <laughs> to not be the right thing to say there. Um, uh, right, I tell you what, I, I have dropped the ball massively this week in terms of sponsor readouts because I've still got two to give. Do you mind if I just do a quick two sponsor readouts and... Um, Batter on. Then we'll, then we'll sum up. Uh, right, Batter folks, on. we are also sponsored by Ultimate Add-ons. Uh, Ultimate Add-ons are the premium manufacturer of mobile phone and action camera mounting solutions for motorcycles. With a kit for any bike and a proven track record of creating products that keep your devices safe, secure, and easily accessible, the Ultimate Add-ons product range is ideal for any rider from the commuter to the round-the-world adventurer. Why shell out on an expensive GPS system when you could use your smartphone, keeping it charged and within reach to take photos of your travels at the same time. Ultimate add-ons waterproof, shockproof, and dustproof tough cases are available for all flagship smartphone models and are designed by riders for riders. Find out why Ride Magazine gives Ultimate add-ons their coveted Best Buy certification. Keep riding this winter with Ultimate add-ons. It's all about the journey. Uh, if you watch any of my bike reviews, folks, you'll see that I, I use Ultimate add-ons all the time. I use the Helix strap mount. It's in the bicycle section. I use that to attach the case to any bike at all i jump on great bits of kit head to ultimateaddons.com and if you use the code teapot110 you'll get 10 percent off any of their range the last one is just a massive shout out to everybody over in the clan on patreon uh I make no bones about this. I could not do this full time without the support of everybody over there in the clan. So a huge thank you comes from me, not only for your support there, but also for the questions that you leave You leave all the time for uh, the podcast. It really does make the podcast the, su- the success it is. So a huge thank you from me. If you're interested in joining the clan, that is, head to patreon.com forward slash teapot1. Right, that is me done, Martin. Sorry, I should have covered that much earlier on in the podcast, but we got lost in That's questions. No I've, I have got my 100 quid um, oh, go on. Best Buy. Right, go Best on. Buy. 100 quid, 100 quid Best Buy, right? Uh, a Krieger R3. Oh, what, the rucksack? It's not the rucksack, it's the bum bag. Ah, oh, R3, I'm thinking of the R30. Right, okay, I was thinking that's, <laughs> that's, that's more than 100 quid. Yeah, ah. no, the R3, the R, the R, I think it's called the R3. Um, You're a proper sports more, bike nut, aren't you? That's it, yeah, <laughs> I mean, you know, it's a pack of fags and uh, and a lighter and uh, a, a credit card for the, that's it. Job for done. the fuel, fuel bill. <laughs> yeah. In fact, I don't even do that now. I've got my Apple Watch. Uh, I don't even need to go in for anything else now. Just double click there and uh, there pay for the fuel. Yeah, until until you get to that time when it goes, this isn't working on this occasion. You need to use your card. Have you had that? It's like every yeah. ten transactions or something, or never, never. Have you not? 
Never. Scottish. It's obviously not buying enough rounds, people. That's what it is. Not, not buying enough rounds. <laughs> not enough, not enough transactions. <laughs> yeah. I've had that. I think it's like every every 20 transactions or something. Or maybe it's just random. I've had this for I've had this for three years now. I've not even right. I don't even think I've had 20 transactions go through it. Show me. Show us how many times he gets his wallet out, doesn't it? Oh <laughs> uh, most. <laughs> cool. Yeah, so it's Krieg Krieg R3, because it's it's uh, it's completely waterproof. Yeah. And then you just shove it round your back, yeah. you know, and uh, yeah, brilliant, brilliant bit of kit. You know, I've never, I've, I, I had one. I, I got, I got Krieger came on board for my. Uh, I'll mention it now since we're nearly done for the round the world trip. Um, they supplied yeah. like the luggage, oh, and they. Did you go round the world? I did. I don't like to chat about it, you know. Um, and so they they gave me one for that, but I. I had so much luggage. I just didn't need it. I, I think I strapped it yeah. around some of the bags and still never used it. So, yeah. No, it's a kind of day trip type. If it's if if, if you're in a one piece leather, yeah. in the one piece leathers, and you're you're heading out for a day trip, mm. and you know you, you don't need to take any luggage with you. Yeah. Um, I put the R. I've got an R twenty as well. Yeah, and I've got that strapped up to the back of the Panigale. Yeah. See, I, I always wear a rucksack. I always wear a rucksack. I've I've got the R. Is it the thirty five? Mm. Yeah. What one is that? It's a big one, anyway. You know, the R thirty. <clears throat> yeah, I, I always wear the R thirty. So, you know, that that I basically get everything I need in that most of the time, unless yeah. I'm away on a trip yeah. or something. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, I can't think of mm. anything. I, 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 I can, but I'm not willing to talk about it on camera. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'll... I'm glad, I, I'm glad I saved the day with that one, you eh, did. Bruce? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You pulled that one out of the bag. Go. Jesus. Blimey. Yeah, um, we were... we were, Yeah, both heading off in completely the wrong direction there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Can't stop thinking about it. such an innocent question. <laughs> No, it wasn't innocent. It wasn't innocent in the slightest. <laughs> they knew exactly where this was going. Um, Martin, oh. awesome, man. Um, thank you very much for joining me. Hey, thanks for having me, Bruce. But before before we end the podcast, is there anything, any shout-outs you want to give, any plugs you want to give? Feel free. Stage is yours. Oh, I, I mean, I just think, um, you know, I, I, I've, I've mentioned Professor John Tyler uh, a couple of times in the past, and uh, he's our technical director. JT, as I call him, wonderful, wonderful guy. We're going to be at um, uh, Bennett's, the uh, British Superbikes oh, at yeah. Silverstone mm -hmm. um, on between the 15th and the 17th of April. Uh, so not far to go now. Um, and we're in Garage One in Pitt Lane. This is a shit job, Bruce, honestly. You know. <laughs> is this the one you Garage tried to get one, me to do? <laughs> Pitt Lane, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, and you said no as well. And I'm away. You made up some. You made up some excuse about <laughs> not being able to go. And oh, I've got. Oh, well, um, I've got my relatives coming. Got to do my hair. Her. Got to do my hair. Yeah. <laughs> Trim my beard. That's it. So yeah. J uh, so going back to going back to JT. Uh, phenomenal guy. Uh, you know, he's got about. 3,000 citations to his name. That's academic <laughs> citations, Bruce. Yeah. Um, yeah, just just an amazing character. Um, so we'll be at Silverstone, we'll be at BSB. If you're if you're coming along to uh, British Superbikes first round, then uh, come and say hello and, and uh, tap us up and you'll be able to meet JT and myself there. Awesome. Right, folks, you heard that? The hint at Silverstone? Give them a shout there. Uh, I will leave all the links down below for uh, the Helmet Inspection website, for all the social media. So if you're listening to the podcast, check out show notes. If you're watching the podcast on, on YouTube, check out the vid description. It'll all be there. So um, if you fancy getting any of your lids, if you fancy getting your helmet inspected, drop Martin a mm -hmm. line. Right, mate. Thank you very much for coming on. I really do appreciate it. And um, yeah, it's been great to figure out, find out a little bit more about you. And um, hopefully we'll be able to do a wee bit more in the future as well. Loved it, Bruce. Thanks very much. Oh, dude, you look after yourself, mate. All right. Take care. Right, folks. Keep on doing your thing. Hope you've enjoyed this one. Remember, getting out there whenever you can. Look after those that you love. But most importantly, most importantly, live your life. Woo-ha!